Good evening. The March 19th, 2024 board meeting is now in order. I'd like to welcome my fellow board members and the public. It is so encouraging to see so many faces in the audience this evening. Um, I'll politely ask the public to help our board meeting flow a little more smoothly by following a few housekeeping rules. The public's opportunity to address the board is during the public comment portion of the meeting. I ask that the public refrain from speaking, loud dis disruptions, distractions, and other forms of communication that will hinder the business of the board. Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Bray? Present. Mr. Trent? Here. Ms. Campbell? Here. Mr. Susan? Here. Ms. Jenkins? Here. At this time, the board would like to hold a moment of silence, and I invite the audience to join. Thank you. We are going to rise. Uh, we have a student here from Vera High, Max Mattel, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, you guys are in store for a treat because we have so many wonderful things that are happening in Brevard County. Um, tonight, we're going to honor several different, different individuals and students. I think our first demonstration that we have, though, is from the Vieira High's Exercise Science and Dental Aid Center, or sorry, Career and Technical Education Program. Um, you guys are going to come forward, correct? And you have a, you're going to show us something, right? <laughs> Go ahead and come on forward. Good evening, Chairman Wright, members of the board, Dr. Rendell. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Carrie Garrison. She is our dental aid instructor at Vieira High School, and Jackie Linswitz, our exercise science. Did I get it right? It is. Uh, <laughs> our exercise science instructor at Vieira. We are so pleased to have um, have these students here under their leadership, and they're going to be describing what you're seeing as we're having the demonstration this evening. Okay. All right, so uh, good evening, board and everyone. Uh, so thank you so much for the opportunity for us to demonstrate both of our programs. Uh, we have a combination of our um, exercise science level three students and dental aid students here, um, and we're going to demonstrate uh, CPR and a rescue situation. Uh, so just as a caveat, normally when the situation is happening, the victim would not be on a table, <laughs> but for, dem <laughs> for demonstration purposes, it, it does make it significantly easier, uh, but we would have the victim on a hard, flat surface like the floor, uh, so just you know, putting that out there. Uh, but we're going to have our uh, two students act out the scene and whatnot, and I will narrate as they go to uh, give some context. Um, and then we will have our two other two students uh, ready to field uh, or answer any other questions that you may have. So you. you're all ready. All right. All right. Go ahead. So when there are two people there available for uh, at a rescue situation, um, it is most uh, evident that you would uh, send someone away in order to call 911 and go retrieve the AED. Um, if this individual were alone, uh, he would then have taken the time to call 911 himself so that he was not reliant on just himself in order to maintain the compressions. Uh, as you will notice, he will only be doing compressions for the CPR. Uh, from two thousand, as of 2012, the American Heart Association has actually recommended uh, compression-only CPR in situations that are not for infants, children, or in respiratory distress situations. Um, and if the rescuer is either uncomfortable with providing uh, breaths or maybe is unsure of their ability to provide said breaths, so since we do not have a pocket mask device here, uh, he is only going to engage in compression-only CPR. Uh, but as you can see, the second rescuer has now returned with the AED so uh, she will be able to help analyze for rhythm if a shock is uh, needed and necessary. So with that now as the compressor has continued with the AED pads on it can uh, begin to analyze for rhythm uh, once the compressor uh, ceases his compressions. So the AED will now analyze for rhythm. 
And so it is recommending a shock, and so the second rescue rule will indicate, indicate that all people should clear out of the way, because one, we don't want the AED to accidentally analyze an incorrect rhythm uh, with both the compressor and the victim. We also don't want uh, it to accidentally defibrillate when it needs to or when it doesn't need to. Uh, so the AED indicates that a shock should be delivered, so the uh, second rescuer will indicate that they should clear again, um, and then the shock is delivered, and now that the patient is um, uh, stable and ready for transport, second rescuer can begin putting the EKG electrodes on uh, so it can be monitored during transport there. So this demonstration here uh, highlights uh, several of the skills that these students learn in our programs. Uh, CPR first aid uh, is something that they learn in their second year and they get certified in. Um, and the EKG is what they are currently learning now. Um, and so they are learning how to uh, take recordings of heart activity. EKGs do not defibrillate, they only record. Um, but these uh, students are able to analyze these heart rhythms and interpret them as such and be able to identify whether someone is in cardiac distress or not and so what you're watching is really only just a couple weeks worth of practice um, and they are already uh, more than proficient at the skill here so now that the victim is prepped for transport you can transport them <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a perfect size gurney yeah <laughs> Very nice, guys. All right, thank you so much. Um, this is funny that this is being presented because I think our board, did we not have a discussion about this on getting trained? And so I wanted to ask you a quick question since I have the opportunity. The last time I used an AED machine, it prompted us verbally and says, so that AED machine does it the same? It as well. Um, okay. So because it would be on um, a dummy as well as because we wanted to transport them, that's why we elected not to turn it on. Okay. But that is the wonderful thing about an AED is that it essentially is, ironically, dummy proof yeah. um, because uh, anyone can operate it and because it tells you exactly what to do. As long as you remember to turn it on, you have something there to assist you during whatever crisis you have. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Well, I'll give my, my fellow board members the time. Um, if you would like to ask any additional questions or make any statements uh, in regards to the display that you just saw. That so thank you so much, guys, for um, this presentation. It's great to see what our students are learning. I know now um, it is state law correct that all of our high school students will learn CPR. So not just in the CTE courses, but how are our students learning that outside of these specific courses? And, and maybe I'm, that's out of scope of. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that, 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 that might be. Um, go for it. I can answer that. Okay. Um, so we actually certify them in BLS in our classes. Okay. Um, last year on at the Vieira High School campus, we actually took students from every grade level. Um, they came down like during lunchtime. Um, we taught them to, um, compression only, mm -hmm. um, and that's as as much as they learned. So they're not actually certified, but right. if they need Trained. to do it, then they can do it. Right. It's amazing all these programs. So you, your your dental students are learning this and yes. your sports science um, students are learning this and I know our, at our other programs our CNA students are learning this we yes. have so many CTE programs that are learning this and I just have to testify I've been in classrooms where we had students who saved people's lives because That's of correct. the training they received in these class even as a high school student who were already saving lives so thank you for what you do um, and providing such practical still skills for our students thank you thank you thank you Ms. Jenkins yeah, I, um, I don't have any questions. Actually, I'm, I'm glad Ms. Wright brought that up because that's exactly what I was thinking when they said that you guys were coming and presenting this tonight. I thought, oh my God, are we doing a live training? <laughs> 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 um, but uh, you know, when we were having that conversation, I admitted it then and I'm gonna admit it still now. It hasn't changed. I've said uh, ever since my daughter was born, I kept saying that I was gonna get CPR certified and, and uh, learn the Heimlich and all of that. And she's seven and a half and I still haven't done that. So. <laughs> Um, well, come this, on over. This just, yeah, this just reminds yes. me, you know, I need, to, I need to get it over with and I need to do it. Yeah. Um, it's an impressive skill set. And like Ms. Campbell said, you know, we've had students here that we've honored for, for using these skills in the real world and saving people's lives. So thank you. Thank you for all you do and for training all of our kids. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Susan. I wanted to say thank you. I think it's ironic that Vieira High School was able to give this presentation. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but Colin Seeley was one of the students yes. years ago 
Um, many people don't know this, but there was a hero, uh, Tim Thomas, who's the ROTC instructor, who when Colin went down at Vieira High School, they were calling for the AED, but they were hearing AD, so they thought they were talking about the athletic director. So Tim Thomas pushed on that kid's chest for like eight, nine minutes until they could bring that there to mm -hmm. save him because of the confusion. And then on top of that, our ambulance that was supposed to come there to save him also took forever because they didn't know how to get to the back. Right. So literally all of that was the reason that we then went with Sean Seema and who we play for <coughs> and everybody else to the state capitol to fight to have CPR required for the whole state. So the three of us went up there. We ran around hotel rooms and everything else. And it, it's just ironic that you guys came here to do this today. And I'm so proud that you're doing it. Because just like my fellow board members said, there is a definite need for this across the county. And lives are saved just because somebody keeps those chest crest compressions going. And that is just something, um, it's something that everybody needs. And I really appreciate you guys coming. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to show us. Because it, right now, everybody in this room that is not certified is saying, I better go get certified. <laughs> so there's a big deal right now that you guys are here. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And if you haven't been certified, please go do it. Yeah. Um, you're going to have that moment where you wish you did, and you may not want that. So thank you. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Trent. Well, not a lot to add after all of, all of you guys. Oh, but on. exactly the same. Uh, thank you so much to, for shining a light on, on what's needed. Uh, young people, thank you for taking the initiative to, uh, you know, to get this talent. Uh, like you said, you know, there's still some of us that are no longer the youth of you that are saying we should probably get CPR certified. Uh, as Some of us were because we were coaches before, but there's a lot of people out there that uh, uh, need the talent that you already have. So thank you and thank you for being that example. Yeah, I, I'm going to echo the sentiments of my fellow board members. Uh, it is such an important skill and really an easy one to, to master. Honestly, mm -hmm. once you learn it, you're going, oh, my gosh, this is like riding a bike. And honestly, you will know it for the rest of your life. And it will save a life. It could potentially save many lives. Um, so thank you to the instructors for all the hard work that you're doing there on teaching these students. I still want to challenge our board. I, we made this comment before that we all need to be CPR certified. I Mine is expired, I will admit. Um, but I think it would be a good lesson for us to all walk through. So we might reach out to you and see if we can come over there and schedule something. We would love it. We okay, would love wonderful. it. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much. Dr. Rendell, do you have anything else to add? I don't have anything else to add. I don't know if you wanted to do a picture before we do the next thing. So. Okay, we'll take a... Uh, yep, yeah, we will we will take a short recess real fast and take a picture if that's okay. Sure. All right.
so I caught on. She's like. He's like, you can get gas. I don't think he, I don't think he officially reset us. Okay. Mike, are you good back there? Okay. I'm good. I'm back on. All right. All right. Thank you. I am going to offer my fellow board members and Dr. Rendell an opportunity to recognize students, staff, and members of the community. Uh, board, I will remind you we have several different recognitions we're doing tonight, so hopefully they don't overlap. But if anybody would like to jump out first and go. Oh. Oh. Go, go, go. we got to go out of order. Um, so our Brevard Achievement Center uh, hosted the annual art festival at the zoo for our ESE students across the district, all age groups. It was a fantastic event, as always, and very much a appreciate the work that they do and all the sponsors, the students from EFSC and a lot of other people. They even had an instrument petting zoo where kids could come and get their hands on violins and banjos and guitars. It was so much fun. So thank you, Robert Achievement Center, for um, your support of our, our students and for all the people at the district, especially in student services who volunteered and helped um, put on uh, and organized that event. It was it was a huge event um, from the beginning to end. And if you got if you were in the zoo that week, our students' artwork was hanging all over the place. And then I wanted to thank uh, we we thanked them on social media, but I just want to publicly thank in our board meeting the Boeing Corporation for their two hundred and fifty thousand dollar check that they presented to the Brevard Schools Foundation in support of Destination Mars, the event that's been going on all month long and will finish up this week. Um, it's a huge gift, and it really is supporting STEM in our schools and our elementary schools as they're looking at what it's like to live on Mars, what it would be like, what are we going to need um, once we get there. And so very much appreciate the Boeing Corporation and the Brevard Schools Foundation for help facilitating that. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Ms. Jenkins? Yeah, so um, I'm going to jump off of that Destination Mars. Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to Amanda Howell for, for orchestrating all of that and taking that on. It is no easy feat. Um, it was... Yeah. 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 <laughs> It was so fun joining them again this year. I didn't get to do every day like I wanted to, but I always have a blast. Um, the day that I got to go there was particularly special um, just because of the, the particular schools that we had that were winning. So hats off to the kiddos at Challenger 7 um, who did a fantastic job that day. And I hear there's a rumor that next year they're not going to Mars, they're going somewhere else. So it's pretty exciting. Um, I also had an opportunity to uh, participate as a judge with the Junior Achievement Social Innovation Challenge, which is also super fun. Um, thank you to JA, not only for coming into our classrooms, but the volunteers who sponsor those students and those teachers uh, to offer this unique and amazing opportunity to our kids. This is the coolest thing in the world. Um, it's kind of like a shark, shark Tank challenge for our kids to come up with products have to stand in front of a group of professionals and present those products to us. Um, it was pretty incredible. And uh, one of the winners from the room that I was in created a um, home device to guard a, um, your security networks with their own VPN. So I mean, these things are like light years ahead of what you're happening right now and um, pretty impressive kiddos. Um, Thank you to the Space Coast Association of Realtors again for hosting Project Prom. It was my first time ever being there. I know Ms. Wright was there for, I think, the entire day. Um, it was so fun. It was so wonderful to see families come in and um, get their attire for free for prom. But there was one family that came in that the dad um, had shared a tragic story. Um, someone had sent him the information, they showed up that day, and he had no idea that it was even going to be free, and he kind of broke down to the staff there. So incredible opportunity for our students and our families, so thank you for everyone who's involved in that. Um, just want to say a reminder that your annual re-enrollment has started yesterday, and it's online! Yay! Yeah. No more paper <laughs> packets! Um, so make sure you get on there and do that. That helps our administrators plan for the next year. So try to do it as soon as you can. We appreciate that. Um, destination kindergarten events, they are starting April 6th. 
from 9 a.m. to 1 will be held at Max Roads Park, and there will be one, I believe, two weeks after that in Titusville. I don't think the destination is uh, officially announced yet, though, so keep your eye out for that. And then last but not least, um, I did get to, get to go on a couple of school tours with Dr. Rendell, and I just want to give a special shout out to one teacher at Port Malabar Elementary in our VEB classroom, Ms. Ramby. Um, I had the opportunity of meeting her last year, actually not meeting her, being in her classroom and subbing, um, but going back there and meeting her was incredible. That is a teacher who lives, breathes, dies for her kiddos. It's the most beautiful classroom. It is so fun, and she pours every single ounce of her heart into those kids. So thank you, Ms. Ramby, for letting us come join you. Thank you, Ms. Jenkins. Mr. Susan. I want to say thank you to everybody here. I see a lot of familiar faces all the way from the wrestling and the uh, satellite, um, you know what I mean, uh, automotive and some of the other stuff here. I want to say thank you also to those of you guys that have done some great audits. I see some great principals and great people in the audience. I want to say thank you to Roy Allen, Ralph Williams, and Harbor City Elementary Schools for having me visit um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, it's been a very good meeting discussing all the things all the way from healthcare to permission slips to MTSS and all the other issues that we have going on inside the district to make sure that we're in line and fixing the problems we have. I also wanted to say thank you to Boeing, Space Florida, Microsoft, Lockheed Martin, SpaceX, Miami-Dade schools, Citrus County schools, and others that were a part of the career and technical workforce um, program out at Kennedy Space Center last week. Many of you may not have known, but we called a large workforce. We are falling behind Texas, Alabama, and California in competition for jobs for the Space Force. And the problem we have is, is that our, we don't have enough workers to fill the positions for the companies that are coming. So we created a workforce summit, we're calling it Space Force Workforce, and what it is is to draw all of the kids from across the state of Florida to challenge those other states to say that we can lead because whoever starts really launching as they start ramping up will be the teams that when we talk about doing Mars rovers and everything else, we will be the center of the entire universe for space exploration. We want to continue to do that, and we can only do that if we have enough workers. I wanted to also say thank you to Ms. Rutledge for her hard work with our 4-H. Many of you don't know, but we're bringing agriculture back into the classrooms. And um, right now, Romalia Farms and Ms. Torlak have stepped up to create systems where students who want to be involved in 4-H style agricultural programs would be able to go to those farms. So I've talked to them today on the phone. They're excited to facilitate for next year. So bringing all that ag back in, uh, Ms. Rutledge, and spending the time on the phone with me today and some of those other partners is a great opportunity. I wanted to say thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Susan. Mr. Trent. All right, I'll make this uh, quick. Um, just like Mr. Susan, I, I can't wait to get through these recognitions uh, for everyone sitting out there. It's, it's going to be a wonderful evening. You guys are well-deserved of all the rec recognition you're going to get. Uh, I, too, had a pleasure of visiting a few schools with Dr. Rendell um, and even one with Mr. Susan here, but William, Williams Elementary and uh, McNair Magnet. Dr. Richardson over there at McNair's is... Uh, He's on top of things. We went and witnessed um, classroom after classroom uh, that was ran well, uh, well managed. Um, we saw music and math and, I mean, making pizzas and reading all within an hour and a half. And the kids were engaged. That's what we're looking for is engaged students. And even in the passing of the hallways, the, the respect that the students gave um, the staff and, and Dr. Richardson, so he's doing a great job over there. Mr. Trent, just to clarify, we didn't see pizza making in the yes, math Yes, you were classroom. upset about that, I could tell. We saw pizza making in the culinary classroom. Oh, oh. Correct. Not yeah. in the math classroom. No, we saw math, we and saw so music, we, went to we math, said reading. And then we saw pizza making. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew we didn't see pizza making in the math classroom. Fractions. However, fractions. however, we did drink tea in the social studies class. We did, we did drink tea class. in the social we, studies We did room. drink tea. But there was a lot of math in that, uh, in it, that dough is resting. Dr. Rendell wanted that pizza right away. We had to teach him that it was had to rest for a day before you can use the dough. So we got that straightened out. Uh, but again, we've encouraged uh, each board member to go outside your district and visit a school. So I, I joined um, and we went down and, and looked at Williams Elementary and uh, Ms. Schroeder. It is a uh, it's it's a pleasure to see uh, an administrator that has you know such a, a grasp of her school. And she this is her first year there, isn't it not? I think it is. Correct, yeah. So um, uh, she's a wonderful fit, and uh, a lot of good things happening uh, there. Ms. Hahn, if you're if you're here, if you're not here, you're 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 back working. Uh, your work is 
is um, well accepted at that elementary school. The new flooring that's going in there and the new uh, carpet and the, and the laminate. The place is looking great and the kids uh, are loving it. So um, excited to get going tonight. Thank you, Mr. Trent. All right, I'm going to try to wrap mine up really quickly. Uh, one of the disadvantages to going to last is that you have attended a lot of these same events that my fellow board members have. So Destination Mars was obviously a very a big highlight for me. It was so much fun uh, watching these students just on the spot problem solve and code and change. I'm going, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that these elementary age students are doing this. Uh, so thank you so much to, to Ms. Howell for putting that on and, um, and inviting us to come be a part of it. I also had the uh, opportunity to attend MPA and that was an absolute uh, just a, a blessing it really was so watching these students get up there and make joyful noise and sing and and then also hearing from other people in other counties that come to judge our students and and really recognizing the fact that our district has put so much emphasis and focus and attention towards the arts and so that was a really really neat thing for me to see and hear from other counties on what they're doing or what they may not be doing and what they love that we're doing so thank you so much to all those teachers uh, mr av at space coast you were running around i think you probably worked 16 hours that day if i were guessing um, i also got the opportunity to attend the parent leadership meeting which was Another really fun thing that happens on a monthly basis, so there's parent liaisons at each one of our schools that have the opportunity to come here at the district uh, and really hear what's going on, and then they get to talk to us and tell us some of the things that, that maybe they could they could provide some insight into ways we could help their school site. So uh, this particular parent leadership meeting had the sheriff uh, present in Juni. And so thank you to the sheriff coming here and, and talking about school safety and how we're keeping our school safe. Uh, there's no greater job, I think, than, than making sure our kiddos are safe every single day. I, too, attended Project Prom. Ms. Jenkins, I didn't get to, to meet the parent that you met, but uh, you and I were, I think you were standing there with the, the young lady that tried on a dress, and she came out, and she, this dress was made for her, and it was just absolutely magical. And it's that moment of, ah, oh, the dress. Uh, but then she finds <laughs> the pockets in the dress and she's like jumping up and down and we're like oh my gosh we're laughing but what a huge success that event is and so we want to find out a way that we can partner with them next year because that event is just tremendous and what the Space Coast Association of Realtors does is um, it's nothing short of really a miracle so uh, and then also today's election day and so one of those fun things that happens is that we have polling sites at some of our schools and I want to to commend those schools because that's a lot of shuffling that happens whenever you have to take an entire area of your school and shut it off now and open it up for the supervisor of elections to come in and set up a polling location. So thank you to our supervisor of elections, to our school sites that are hosting some of those, uh, and to all the, the poll workers and watchers. We appreciate you. We see you. We recognize your importance. So um, we will I'll wrap up my, my recognition. So. Um, at this time, we have several staff uh, members and students who we're going to recognize tonight for their dedication and their accomplishments. First, we have two instructional assistants who've been praised by their colleagues. Uh, Miss Maggie Potter, are you here? Okay, all right. Uh, and so Miss Maggie is a IA from Central Middle School. She's going to come forward with one of our transportation specialists, our driver, uh, David Eli, who wrote a magnificent letter. Okay, all right, come on. <laughs> Did you bring the letter? Do you have the letter that you're going to read? You David, do? Okay. All right, go ahead. So you wanted to open them up, so I'll turn it over yeah, to you. Yeah, I just want to introduce David. Dr. Rendell, thank you guys for letting me speak. I know um, Dr. Miller was a little concerned, but <laughs> anyway, first of all, thank you guys for what you have done for transportation. I speak for at least 100 drivers that are so thankful for the commitment you've made to us. And I know Chris Reed somewhere here in the building, and the disciplinary program is fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. No, thank okay. you. Yeah. We thank appreciate you. you guys. Thank you. I, I want to introduce David, David Ellie. I've known David since I've came to work here, and I've always wanted this moment to be able to speak <laughs> about what this gentleman is. He is the epitome of a bus driver. He's a pleasure to get up and work with every morning. He's just a ray of sunshine. And this letter he's about to read to all you guys is David. He brought it to me to talk about Miss Potter and how awesome and how much of an influence she is. Well, this gentleman's also an influence, and I'm not trying to take from Miss Potter. Mm -hmm. She's fantastic. But anything you ever want done, David is yes, sir, yes, sir. And when you thank him, he says, it's my pleasure. And all I want to say, it's my pleasure to introduce David Aww, Ellie. Thank you. Might I 
Madam Chair, esteemed members of the board, Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me in the first place to extend my sincerest gratitude for the opportunity to address this esteemed garden. My name is David Ellie, and I proudly serve as a bus driver for the South Area District. I recognize that my speech may bear the distinctive accents of both Ghanaian and British English, but I assure you that I will endeavor to communicate clearly and effectively. I'm truly humbled to find myself in front of this August Assembly today. I owe a debt of gratitude to my supervisor, Mr. John Davis, whose support and encouragement have made this moment possible. I extend my heartfelt appreciation to him and to all of you for affording me this opportunity. Today, however, it's not about me. It is about Henri Miss Porter. Her contributions are enormous. With your kind permission, Madam Chairperson, I will proceed to read the letter. I'm writing to express my appreciation and recognition for the astounding contributions of Mrs. Maggie, uh, Maggie Porter, who is an assistant on my bus. Mrs. Porter has consistently gone above and beyond in ensuring the well-being and positive development of the students of, on our bus. Mrs. Porter does not only fulfill her responsibilities with diligence, but has also taken it upon herself to instill important moral values in the students. Instead of being bossy and pervasive, she has taken the initiative to teach the morals and lead by example as I drive the school bus. This approach is undoubtedly having positive impact on the student's behavior and character development on the bus and beyond. Moreover, Mrs. Porter has consistently treated the students with the utmost respect and kindness. She has created a safe and supportive environment on the school bus where students feel valued and respected. It's evident that this approach has fostered a sense of community and contributed to a healthy atmosphere during their commute to and from school. I believe that recognizing and appreciating Mrs. Porter, exceptional efforts is important to encourage and motivate such positive behavior. Maggie exemplifies the values and qualities that we aim to instill in our students and her Dedication is truly commendable. I kindly re request that Mrs. Porter be formally acknowledged for her exemplary service and contributions to our school community. Whether through a public announcement happening already, <laughs> so I do not have to go over that. Thank you so much for considering my request. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words. Uh, Mrs. Potter, would you like to come up for just a moment and, and 
I know you're like, uh oh, I'm gonna have to say something. So, uh, no, I, I think it's exceptional. Whenever we receive a letter of recommendation from someone else within the district who's seen the special things that you're doing that really make a difference, um, it's very important for us to honor you and say thank you and that you're seen and we appreciate you. Uh, I wanna ask you though, how long have you been with the district for? Six months. Six months. All right. Many more years of, of working with us, hopefully. So yes, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Fellow thank board you. members, do you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, just <laughs> super quick. I just want to say there's, there's no greater honor than being recognized and acknowledged by the people who work with you. And to hear that you've only been here six months and you've already made such an impact on, on the person you're sharing a space with is really incredible. Thank, thank you to both of you for everything that you do. And, and thank you for supporting one another. Yes. Uh, can I say thank you to my principal for hiring me? Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. We don't, actually have more, though. Don't so tell them not to go far. Don't go too far because we're going to take a picture with you guys, but we have one more recognition I think that we're going to make today. Um, is Amy Cedar, are you here? All right. Wonderful. And you are an instructional assistant at Meadow Primary. Uh, and bus driver Jenny Genwright, are you? You're with her. Perfect. All right. Well, I think we got another wonderful recognition that uh, hopefully you'll be willing to share. Good evening to the board and Dr. Rendell. I'm Deanna Smith. I'm the proud principal at Meadow Lane Primary. And we are here this evening to recognize Miss Amy Cedar, one of our pre-K instructional assistants um, who serves in a blended classroom. So she serves students um, in the gen ed setting and also students with exceptionalities. But not only does she use all of her energy in the classroom, she also is a bus um, IA. So she rides a bus in the morning and the afternoon. And the reason why we're here is because one of our incredible bus drivers um, is wanting to honor Miss Amy as her bus IA. So I'm going to let Miss Jenny Jen Wright read the letter that she sent in. Thank you. Um, I first just wanted to say um, when John introduced David, he went. Um, I, I just wanted to agree with him. Mr. David is just the sweetest thing. He's so good Aww. to all of us. And he really, anytime you tell him thank you or you ask him to do something, you're just wonderful, David. Thank mm. you. Aww. Thank you for just being wonderful and always helpful. Um, um, my, I'll read you my letter. Um, thank you so much for honoring Amy tonight for recognizing her for working so hard. Um, my name is Jenny Jenright, and I've been a school bus driver for pu Brevard Public Schools for 10 years. Um, I was recognized in the fall, um, which is why I knew it was okay to do this. So I hope <laughs> a lot of other people will know that it's okay to let people know that, let, let people know that it's okay to recognize people for doing a great job. I thought that that was really neat that you guys do that. Um, so I was recognized at a school board meeting in the fall because of a letter sent to you by a parent of one of the school students that I drive. I wanted to write to you about my Meadow Lane primary instructional assistant. Her name is Amy Cedar. I pick her up every morning at 620. I just thought you guys should know that it's really that early when I pick her up. Amy's amazing. She goes above and beyond every single day. She and I are responsible for 62 students on our bus, among whom are quite a few pre-K, kindergarten, and ESE students. We would both tell you that we work as a team. That makes our bus a good place to be. And I am so grateful to have her. There are truly not enough words to say thank you for all the things she does, but I thought everyone should know what an incredible person she is. And I really do think you are. Um, I'll start by just saying Amy is dependable, always there waiting and ready to go when I arrive to pick her up, though it's still dark, and she has two school-age students of her own to take care of before she can begin her adventure with me. I'll attempt to list as many of the things as, that Amy does during our routes in the morning and afternoon as I can. She buckles and unbuckles pre-K students. She buckles and unbuckles ESE students, which there are quite a few. She gets out communication tablets for ESE students and listens to their needs. Um, if you don't know what that is, they have tablets. They, they can't speak. Um, many are autistic, nonverbal. And so they have tablets that they push a button on to say what they need to communicate. So she goes to see what it is that they're trying to communicate with us. Um, she wipes the noses of a lot of students. <laughs> so that seems like not a big deal yeah, unless yeah, you're doing it a lot. <laughs> She goes to or answers the needs of students with their hands up for any number of reasons. And there are a lot of students on this bus, y'all. Uh, she, 
she mediates disagreements. If you drive even two or three kids, you know that that's a thing. Um, she helps get pre-K and kindergarten tags ready to be checked when we get to a bus stop as we're making sure each student gets safely to their listed authorized pickup person in the afternoons. She reminds the students to get their things so that they don't leave all their things on the bus. That's also a big deal. That's in the morning and the afternoon. After the students are off the bus, she picks up anything they've left behind and buckles any unbuckled seat belts. That's just a blessing to me. That's something she doesn't have to do. That's something she does just because she's a blessing to me. Um, being a bus driver is not an easy job. Amy would be the first one to tell you that. Being an IA is definitely not an easy job either. We have mutual respect because what we do is tough, but doing it together as a team makes both of our jobs much easier. I hope you recognize her and join me in telling her how much you appreciate her hard work and dedication. She definitely deserves it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amy, let me ask you, how long have you been with the district? Six years. Six years. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for all the hard work you do. There's no greater honor, like my board member said, than being uh, recognized and acknowledged by your, by your teammates that you're working alongside. We're going to take a quick photo, if that's okay, if we can have the other group come back up. I don't think we need to go into a formal recess. We'll just go ahead and snap a photo real quick. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we have, again, back to all the fun, exciting things. We have so many fun, exciting things happening tonight. So several of our high school students took part in the Top Tech Challenge, which is a statewide automotive competition. Uh, and yes, our teams here in Brevard County did very, very well. I think, Ms. Rutledge, are you going to come up and, and show us just how well these teams did? Absolutely, and I'd actually like to bring up our amazing instructors this evening. We have Ed Sebetka from, um, from Rockledge. I have Chris Wilson and Randy Pitts from Satellite, if you don't mind jo joining me up here. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> so yes, we have some amazing automotive students. I would put our students up against any auto kids throughout the state and the nation. Um, they are super competitive and skilled at the work that they do. So we had um, three different four different teams that placed at the state level in the Universal Technical Institute uh, statewide competition. And um, I had their instructors here to talk just a little bit about that. Um, have some questions for them. Also want you to hear from a student and a parent okay. about this. But it's not just the UTI competition that they excelled in. They also excelled in our Skills USA competition, which is another career tech student organization that students can compete in a variety of, um, a variety of activities. So, um, instructors, please come up here real quick. <laughs> I'd like to ask you first, um, since we have so many of your students here to highlight their families, what characteristics do you see in your students that performed well in these competitions? Um, I, 
when I, I when a kid starts coming in, actually, I, when they come in as a freshman, I start looking at their potential. Uh, my number one star student for the past three years, I, I pulled him out and put him in competition as a freshman. I saw some, I saw a spark in him, and this was during COVID, and I only had him for six weeks at the time that I put him in his first competition, and he actually pulled out fifth place. Um, I, I, you know, we work really hard with all our students, and something I'm very proud of, and we're up for any kind of challenge. One thing that a lot of people don't really recognize is that when we go play other schools, that whole school represents a county. It's countywide, mm -hmm. and we got six automotive programs. So imagine if we all just had one school and we had the best students of all, nobody would ever touch us. But we do an amazing <laughs> job with what we have and something that I'm very proud of. I always have been for the 18 years I've been here. Mm, thank you. Uh, to add to what Randy said is, um, you know, as the automotive program of Brevard County, each year that we go to this competition, it's always the Brevard schools that are um, finishing up top. Um, I remember taking a group of students, and there's 20-some schools there, and they start at, I think, like 10th place, and they start going down the list, and they're like, oh, my God, we're at fifth, and we're still not called. <laughs> we must have done terrible. And the next thing they know, they, their names are called, and they're they're obviously proud of their accomplishments. So it's always exciting to go to the competitions and see the kids. Um, I've had parents write me letters saying that was their highlight of their high school career. Mm. So it's always pretty, um, you know, rewarding for the students as well as the instructors. Can I ask a question? Just because I don't know what these competitions yeah. look like. I've never Very good been question. to one. Very and good. So can you tell me what are they doing when they compete? This year, UTI threatened and says, we're changing the whole competition. You better be ready. Okay. And I said, I am ready. Bring it on. We're not scared <laughs> of nobody. Okay. And uh, we actually pulled out first um, this year. Uh, we're actually the first school with a back-to-back -back first place win ever in the 12-year awesome. history. Yeah. Uh, Commendable. And... Um, UTI to me is the most fairest competition out there. Um, you know, nobody really has, they don't have a, anybody to, to root for. They don't put, you know, it's totally different from the other competitions we do. Uh, they don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak, because when we go to the other, at Skills USA, we play against the other school. The hosting school has their competitors in, in that competition, so they already have a leg up on us, and when we can still, win against the other schools that are hosting the competition. That's a, a, a big accomplishment, I, I feel. Uh, but UTI, again, they're fair to everybody. And they had rumors that some schools had some insight to it, so they threatened. And they changed everything this year. <laughs> and I'm glad That's they do it. I hope they change it every year. Can you tell them specifically what types of competitions the kids compete in? OK. We did. They had to do electrical stations. They had to do a brake station. They had to do an AC station, um, written test. a written test, and uh, there was five different stations, parts identification. and parts identification was the five different tests that they did. And um, two of my, my um, they also had individual trophies this year for the highest scores. My number one guy not, got a 96. My number two guy got a 95 wow. total of scores. That's amazing. And uh, which we were very proud of, too. Yeah, thank you. Anything else to add on this one? OK, so what I'm hearing is that our automotive students, we can stack them up against anybody, and they're going to take the win, right? <laughs> That's what we want, yeah. And I told these gentlemen before I came up here, I have a shirt from all of these schools. And Heritage, I also have a shirt from Heritage. Mr. Browd wasn't able to be here this evening, but um, I told him I couldn't pick which one, so I didn't wear any. There you go. I didn't want to represent <laughs> the fair. wrong way here. Got to keep it fair. Okay, so what are you most proud of with your students? I think what I'm most proud of with our students is the passion uh, for the trade, um, how they excel in school, not just in our program, which Obviously, they make as much time as possible in their day, um, but uh, uh, just uh, it, it carries over into the rest of their school day as well. 
Uh, we get a lot of um, uh, teachers that we share students with that will <laughs> contact us and, and ask us about our students and, and they're just blown away that they're as involved and, and uh, that they are, you know, not just in our <coughs> program but in, in the school as gen in general. Um, and kind of brag on our school a little bit, we have a pretty good um, sense of community in our school and uh, we're very, very proud of that. <coughs> <laughs> what are you most proud of with your students? Um, yeah, uh, they're passionate about their their uh, studies. They, you know, they're obviously in the automotive class because that's what they're passionate about. And most of the the guys that go to these competitions, uh, they're working in the local dealerships here in town. I have students working at the Lincoln dealer right up the street. Um, Toyota, you name it, all the dealerships in this county are employing our students. So that's, at the end of the day, that's our job, to get them employed, and that's what we're trying to achieve. So the students are passionate about, you know, what they're doing, and it shows in, the, in their future. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, and just to kind of feed into that, I know we were talking about pizza in the math classroom. Well, there's kind of some correlation with our MESH classes and our career tech ed. They're learning about measurement and math yes. in their automotive. And we're not making any pizzas there, but you know, um, they're, learn they're reinforcing those skills. Okay, so I'd like to um, call up really quick uh, Ms. Stephanie White. She is a parent of one of our automotive students. She just wanted to um, say what this program has done for her child. Hi, good evening. I've been an um, educator and currently an assistant principal with Brevard for over 20 years. Um, and I've been fortunate to see the impact that teachers have on students a lot. Um, but tonight I'm wearing my parent hat because I wanted to take the opportunity to recognize Mr. Wilson and Mr. Pitts for the program that they run at Satellite and the influence it has had on my son. Um, their dedication and their commitment to their students is unwavering. They um, open their shop up early every morning of the week and they have a room full of kids that are there to practice. They give up their evenings and their weekends to go to competitions. Um, that are long and very boring sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> they um, bring guest speakers in to talk to the kids about different careers. They have helped them write applications to um, scholarship um, programs. Um, the list goes on and on and on, and I just can't say enough about what they do um, for the students at Satellite. And I also just wanted to take a moment to thank Mr. Pruitt and Ms. Lundy for supporting the automotive program at Satellite. And I know um, there's a time commitment that comes with that. So as you sit here in your position, I wanted to just take a moment to say to you, as you think about CTE education, continue to support it because it is impacting kids on a level you can only begin to understand. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Jason, you want to come up here and say something really quickly? Uh oh. Jason is one of our rock stars that we're recognizing tonight. He's a winner on many, many competitions with our from satellite. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity tonight to let me speak. Is this on? It is. <clears throat> The Satellite Auto Tech plays an important role for kids like me who are looking for opportunities outside of the traditional path. Being in this program the last four years has allowed me to become better through competition. For example, I am the back-to-back -back winner of the Universal Top Tech Challenge. <clears throat> this program ran by Mr. Wilson and Mr. Pitts has produced a lot of other winners, as shown as everybody sitting next to me. <clears throat> <clears throat> this speaks volumes about our program at Satellite. I chose this program because I am fascinated by cars. Through my competition winnings, I have secured a full ride to Universal Technical Institute to their NASCAR school to study CNC machining. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> the satellite program has helped many kids like me find a career path that we enjoy. Thank you for letting me speak tonight, and thank you, Dr. Rendell, and everybody on the board. Thank you, Jason.
And to wrap it up this evening, Rainy Pitts would like to say something. I, uh, I have been teaching at Satellite High School for 18 years, and unfortunately, I'm going to retire this year. I've had a wonderful career at Satellite High School. It's, I've, I've done things that I didn't know was out there. I have taken students and won things that our backs were against the wall, and we came out on top. I've had several principals say, or a couple principals say, you sure you can do this? Sure, we can do this, and still come out on top. Uh, everything that we have done, we have been in the top percentage of every every competition that we have ever entered. Uh, we've done Skills USA, Ford AAA, uh, the uh, Quaker State Best in Class Challenge, UTI, and Dealers Association, uh, Dealers um, Central Florida Dealers Compet uh, Competition, which we also went to New York City in. Uh, so, I, like again, uh, thank y'all for supporting the CTE program. We have students that come up and say, and I had a couple of them come today and say, you know, if it wasn't this program, I wouldn't be here at Satellite today. Wow. Uh, it's the, this, these type programs keep these kids in school. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pitt. And Randy, you've made such an impact for our kids over the years, and we are really going to miss you, um, but are glad you're going to get to take that RV and hit the road. But I'm um, mm -hmm. very grateful for your, for your service to our kids. So, yes, thank you. Thank I think you. we wanted to take a great photo with you guys. Yeah, too. I want to, I want to ask Ray, something see real one. quick. Wants to speak. Okay, go ahead. So, go Mr. Ahead. Pitts, if you guys can come up to the podium, and I want to hear from the kids just a yay or nay. One of the things is we have the best career and technical automotive programs in the state. There's no doubt. You guys win every competition. But the thing is, is that when I go to other states, North Carolina, Texas, other places like that, schools actually have race car teams. You guys go to Gator Nationals, right? Didn't we just do a big field trip? Why isn't we don't just have a team, a high school team that goes and competes? Would you guys be interested in doing something like that if I was able to pull it together with them? <laughs> we, we take on any kind of talent. Well, it sounds like Mr. Pitt. Sounds like I might be able to. I might be able to talk you into coming back. That's what I'm saying. Hey, from the back, the kids. Would you guys I'm be interested a, in something I'm, like that? That's what I'm talking about. You put off his retirement if would you do that. That's it. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm serious, Mr. Pitt. I'm actually a former drag car ra that, racer. So I'm, I'm, I know that, and that's one of the reasons I was talking about it is because, <laughs> to be honest with you, I've seen it, and I've seen the inspiration that it gives to the children when you have a team like that, and they go and they beat a lot of teams that are sponsored by other programs. And I had a conversation with a couple of people that are very high influential people in the in the race car industry, and they would be very interested in trying to do something like that. And now Dr. Rendell's going to fall out of his seat because I'm talking about putting together race teams. <laughs> for the do it. Thank you. I, I want to jump in there really quick. Um, first of all, Mr. Pitts, you can't leave until you find your own replacement. Um, so you, we work on that, and then we'll let you then we'll let you retire, right? Um, you said something really important when you talked about the way other districts do it, because they have a technical center and everybody who's going to be a part of the automotive program has to go to that technical center. I am a huge advocate to continue to do it the way we do it in Brevard, because that allows such greater access for students who going to a technical center that's 20, 30 miles away or farther it is just not going to work for everybody. So we have excellent programs from north to south. We have excellent programs all the way down from Heritage up to Titusville, teaching students these skills. We don't have it at every high school, but we have it somewhere close. So students are passionate about cars, about um, mechanics, about um, auto body, whatever it is, we've got somewhere close by that has a program that they, where they can get this training and be ready to go out into the workforce. So I appreciate the leadership that was in place before I ever got here to make sure that we have programs from north to south, but it has to be staffed with people who are passionate. And clearly, our, our uh, automotive teachers in Brevard are passionate and passing that on to their students. So thank you for what you do, and I'm really proud of the work that you guys do from all across the district. Thank you. Um, one thing, let me, oh, some of the teams that we go up against are actually, they're Votex centers and sponsored by Ford Chrysler or General yep. Motors wow. or all three of them. Yep. Wow. So they are multi-million dollar schools um, and we're still right in the fighting ring with them. We still Woo. can hold our own against testimony them. Testimony to your good leadership. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I have an exciting announcement for a new automotive competition. It's a rusted old 2009 Hyundai Elantra that's in my driveway, <laughs> about 180,000 miles. We can see what you guys can do with it. 
Um, no, I just I didn't want to I didn't want to see you walk away without acknowledging you publicly, Mr. Pitts. You are a landmark in the Satellite Beach community, and um, I'm happy for you that you are retiring. But I know that you are going to break a lot of hearts because there's some generational families there that that are going to be a little sad that you're gone. But thank you for all that you do. I hear nothing but wonderful things about you, um, even from my husband on the soccer field. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Mr. Trent, do you have anything? I just want to say uh, job well done, guys, and congratulations on your yeah. 18 years here. And I'm sure you're going to continue with that enthusiasm in your next chapter. So. Race car. Race car. Race car. <laughs> thank you again. No, we, we truly appreciate you. And this is one of those life skills that you teach that these, these kids will grow on to be men, and they'll teach these lessons to their sons. Uh, and it really, really changes the world for the better. So thank you so, so much. And I would vouch to say, what do you think your job placement rate is? I mean, if you were going to say, out of the students we have, we're, what do you think that is? Um, it's getting better and better every year. We have dealers that are call, calling us right now. Do you got any seniors that we can put to work. Uh, the bigger problem was the age uh -huh. factor because everybody wants to be 18, but some of the dealers are starting to hire people at 17. Okay. Uh, we got independent shops that are calling us now for students. Uh, it took us a long time to get there, but everybody in Bivard County knows all about the, all, all the programs here in Bivard. And, you know, we got, um, percentage wise, it's hard to really say, but we got several students each program's got several students out there in the field right now working, and I try to encourage my students to go on to UTI post-secondary because they should be going to post-secondary before they hit the wor uh, work world, and out of there, they're just about all getting a job in this I would industry. vouch to say, I would vouch that that number is probably significantly high, if not close to 100%. <laughs> and um, our young men and young ladies are um, finding opportunities in automotive, which is really exciting, yeah. even through the internship program their senior year. Absolutely. Dr. Rendell, do you have something you would like to add? I just want to make sure we have the students here, and I believe all the students here, they placed, right, at, at the competition. So want to have a big picture with them up here, but I want each of them to come to the microphone and say their name, what school they're at, and where, where they placed in the competition. All right. So they need, they need some time in the spotlight, so let's get them all up here. I know we got the first place team, but we've got others too, and they've all placed, they've all done really well, so we need to get them up here. So name, school, and what, what, what you guys placed? Uh, I'm Coa Kelly, and uh, I'm at Satellite, and I, uh, we got first place at uh, UTI Talk Tech Challenge. Awesome. I'm Jason White, I was Coa's partner, and we got first place. All yep. right, good so job. you guys line up over here. My name's Owen Erickson. Uh, my partner is right there. <laughs> His name is Schaefer Cook. We placed second place in the automotive competition and got $7,500 scholarships. All right. And what, what school? Guys. What school were you guys at? What school? Rock, rock, there we go. Okay. See? All right. My name is Bryce Jean Antonio at Satellite High School. My partner here is Gage Underwood, and we won 10th place with a $1,000 scholarship. Awesome. Outstanding. My name's Jonathan Smith, and my friend here is Keegan Blunt. We both placed fifth place and got a 1,000 scholarship to UTI. Awesome. All right. What school <clears throat> Did you say your school? From Heritage, Her right? From Heritage? Okay. Yeah, that's Heritage. Awesome. All right, we're going to right, snap picture. a photo with you guys. What a, the, the scholarship money was first place was 10,000 per student, second place was 7,500 per student, third place was 5,000 per student, and then uh, fourth through 10th all got 1,000 per student. So they did really well.
talking, so I'm not going to talk anymore. things we're celebrating tonight. I know you guys are like, okay, when is it going to be our turn? All right, we have student student champions to honor tonight. So during the uh, recent Florida Wrestling State Championship, we had a total of 26 wrestlers from nine schools that medaled. Um, the director for the district athletics, Kevin Robinson, are you here? Where is he? Okay, I'm like, oh, you back there? All right. So you're going to come to the podium and showcase some of these young men and women and the achievements that they have accomplished. Good evening, Ms. Wright, school board, and Dr. Rendell. Gives me great pleasure to recognize the 26 wrestlers who medaled at the state championships earlier this month, including the two, the two wrestlers who won individual state championships. So Brevard qualified 52 wrestlers from 12 schools altogether for the state tournament. And exactly half of those wrestlers earned medals for placing in the top eight in their respective weight classes. Ms. Wright and Dr. Rendell, I invite you guys down to come to the front and center. And I'm like, what, what's happening? What's up? Okay. I'm like, what's <laughs> No live demonstration. Okay. How about the rest of the board? <laughs> where's, the, where's the AED? Don't be nervous. This is not a demonstration. So. Okay, students, when I call your name, come to the front, shake hands with Ms. Wright and Dr. Rendell, and then move to the far side of the dais. We will go alphabetically by school. Uh, first up from Astronaut High School, Preston Pinero was seventh place in the state. I don't think Preston could make it tonight, but still wanted to recognize him. Um, from Coco High School, we have Cole Webb, seventh place in the state also. And from Cocoa Beach High School, Adrian Day, fifth in the state. <laughs> Billy Day, seventh place in the state. That's and cool. Madden Fredenberg, third place in the state as a get freshman. Get And next up from Heritage High School, the first state champion in school history at Heritage High School, Solomon Peterson. <laughs> and seventh place in the state is Gustavo Ferreira. fifth in the state. And Caleb Gabrielson came in at third place in the state. And finally, Harper Noel was fifth place in his weight class. Next up is Merritt Island High School, and first up we have state champion Caleb Ivey. <laughs> Trey Driggett placed eighth in the state. And Landon Quiroga finished up sixth place in his weight class. Since we're on Merritt Island High School, I also want to
kind of take a minute to, uh, to give a shout out to former Merritt Island High School state champ, Elijah Lusk, who is now wrestling for Lander University. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because Elijah last weekend placed sixth in the NCAA Division II National Tournament, helping his team to a second place finish overall. So with that finish, Elijah is now a two-time All-American as a junior. So it's just good to see uh, Brevard wrestlers having success at the college level also. So I just wanted to point that out. And from Palm Bay High School, we have Chris Brunson, fourth place in the state. Leonard Christian, also fourth place in the state. And Octavian Osby, third in the state. Also placing for Palm Bay High School at eighth place in the state, Raymond Jackson. Raymond couldn't be here tonight. Next up from Satellite High School, Ryan Byrne, third in the state. Ryan will be wrestling at Duke University next year. Anthony Dix, fourth place in the state. And Jake Giovino, second place in the state. Next up from Titusville High School, Parker Bryant, seventh in the state. And from Vieira High School, Alex Giletti, fifth place in the state. Emma Hoppy, second place in the state. <laughs> Catalina Kenny, fifth place in the state. <laughs> Brian Mitchell, sixth in state. Edwin Torres, eighth in state. Congrats to all of our wrestlers who earned state medals this season. I am super proud of all these wrestlers and coaches for their accomplishments and for all the hard work that they put in to get there. In fact, we have some of the coaches here today. I want to ask you guys to go ahead and stand and be recognized for all your hard work. Members and Dr. Rendell, would you guys like to say anything? Absolutely. Coaches, come on down.
waiting patiently, and so I know they're like, hey, we're leaving. Uh, real quick, hey, I just want to say, go. hey, thank you guys <laughs> for all the hard work you're doing. The dedication that you make as a wrestler, making weight, the physical training, the matches, I mean, it's, it is impressive. Uh, it's something you'll carry with you for the rest of your life, but we just want to say, hey, we're proud of you guys. We recognize yeah. you guys, and, and way to go represent our county very well. <laughs> Can I, I want to just say, uh, before the coaches leave, um, when you all were asked to stand up, you all were very humble and, of course, didn't want to take recognition. <laughs> but I, I just want to give another hats off to you guys because anyone who's working in our athletics department is not getting paid enough for the job that they do in the first place. You do this because you love it and you love those kids and you support them. So thank you and congratulations yeah, thank for you all coaches. your hard work. Madam Chair. So many people don't know this, but our female wrestling is the highest and fastest growing portion of our female um, athletes. And what we have is, is the um, situation where a couple of years ago, one of the coaches advocated for us to put in stipends for female coaches. And that's truly what really blew up the uh, female coaching for wrestling. And as a former coach that coached wrestling, it was the most demanding sport I've ever coached in my life. And I've coached almost every one of them at the high school level, but that was incredible. And what those kids did at a state championship is unheard of. Yeah. So just wanted it's to say. Very That's impressive. a growing sport. Yes. All right. So, all right. We have one more group I think that we are we are recognizing tonight. So I know you guys are patiently waiting, and, and we appreciate the patience there. So we are going to invite, is Miss Cindy Lazinski available, or is she? She's coming up to the podium all right good we are going to honor our school bookkeepers uh this will be the second round that we're honoring we did honor a group uh in february 6 but we want to remain we want to honor the remaining school bookkeepers that we did not get in that batch so miss lazinski can you come up and i think you have prepared the I can list share my team here all right <laughs> okay tonight we are pleased to honor and celebrate the outstanding achievements of our district schools in the area of financial management and accountability. As you may know, every year our schools are required by state law to undergo an internal accounts audit. This audit examines how our schools handle the funds that are raised, collected, and spent for student activities such as field trips, clubs, teams, and events. These funds are vital for enriching the educational experience for our students but they also pose a high risk of fraud, misuse, or error. That is why we need to ensure our schools follow the best practices of internal controls and comply with state statutes and board policy. Our accounting firm, RSM, audited the financial records and procedures at each of our schools. They checked for accuracy, timeliness, completeness, authorization, documentation, and compliance in uh, various areas such as receipts, deposit, expenditures, fundraising, sales tax, and petty cash. They also issued a final report for each school which indicated whether there were any audit findings or not. A report of no audit findings means that the auditors did not find any issues or errors in the areas noted above. It's actually a very remarkable achievement and it reflects the high level of professional, professionalism, integrity, and excellence that our school leaders and staff demonstrate every day. The research is clear. Leaders of schools who demonstrate the highest level of financial stewardship and spend money wisely have a significant impact on positive student outcomes. It is also extremely important that we provide confidence to the board and our community that our schools maintain rigorous internal controls and make every dollar count. So I would like to invite each bookkeeper and their principal. So Apollo Elementary, uh, bookkeepers Deborah Bryant, principal Amy DeLego. <laughs> Atlantis Elementary, Rebecca Emick and Erica Back is the principal. <laughs> Creel Elementary, uh, Shinawa Long, Shinawa, Shinawa, sorry, Long 
and the principals, Nicole uh, Gaiman. Gemini Elementary, uh, bookkeeper D.D. D. Rich, and principal Christina Carver. Uh, Harbor City Elementary, uh, bookkeepers Lisa Marie Kelly, and the principals Christine Boyd. India Atlantic Elementary, um, uh, Lynette Torres is not attending, but the principal is accepting for her, uh, Colleen Lord. <laughs> Longleaf Elementary, the bookkeeper is Carlene uh, Caesar, and principal Jason Sherburn. Um, Meadow Lake Intermediate, the bookkeeper is Sarah Blake. <laughs> Yay. And the principal's uh, Sarah Barnett. <laughs> Ralph Williams Elementary, the bookkeeper is Lisa Moore. And principal Susan Schroeder. South Lake Elementary, <coughs> bookkeepers uh, Jackie Sellers and Principal Jennifer Brockwell. <laughs> Stone Middle, uh, bookkeepers Denise Olson and the principals Courtney Lundy. Suntree Elementary, the bookkeeper is Kelly Mogford, <laughs> and Principal Sherry Tressler. <laughs> University Park Elementary, the bookkeeper is Tanya Hales, and Principal Anna Diaz. And our last school is Viera High, uh, bookkeeper Renee Ambrose with Principal Heather Legate. Thank you all. I just met it sometime. So. We will, yeah. yes. We have the re the proclamation. Yeah. That's after the agenda. Get the Adoption of the agenda, and then I say let's do the proclamation so that those guys can go, and then we'll break before before we go into public comment. Is that fair? Do we have? Do we have?
have administrators. Do we have what? Oh, the administrators are after. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're back. Yep. Okay, right, wonderful. So, I thought we were not going to get here, guys, but we're here. We're here. All right, this brings us to the adoption of the agenda. Dr. Rendell. Thank you, Madam Chair. On this evening's agenda, we have a resolution, administrative staff recommendations, 26 consent items, two action items, and one information item. The additional items are I-44, Code of Conduct, and the revised items are B-10, Bookkeeper Audit Recognition, and C-12, Kindness All Around Symbol Resolution. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? No. Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins? Aye. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Wright? Aye. Mr. Trent? Aye. Mr. Susan? Aye. All right. On tonight's agenda, we have something very, very special. We have the resolution for the kindness all around symbol. This is a national symbol that was created by our students and our staff right here in Tropical Elementary. We invite these students tonight. I think we have a couple that are kind of come up, I believe, and read the proclamation. Is that? Is Ms. Barbara, are you coming up as well? Okay. Is, this, is the step stool still there for the? Okay, perfect. I love it. Hi. Uh, thank you for having us today, uh, Dr. Rendell, ladies and gentlemen of the school board. Um, I wish all the wrestlers were still here. <laughs> they really filled up the auditorium. Um, we're um, celebrating the fifth anniversary of the kindness um, symbol, and we appreciate the adoption of it five years ago. The kindness symbol started with my TK class in 2018. We were studying Patriot's Day and the 10 Days of Peace. And the children told me that people should be kind. And that they believed that if people saw a symbol of kindness, it would remind them to be kind. So we developed a kindness symbol and we gave it to the world. Uh, the students proceeded to follow their own advice. They were kind to each other in our classroom and out. They were role models to each other. They stood up for each other. They helped each other. They didn't just act kind. They also paid it forward, literally. They read thousands of books to earn more than $1,000 to donate to their chosen charities, such as the Children's Hunger Project, Aging Matters, and Lessons with Love. Feed the kids, help the grandparents, and help people across the world. And through it all, they had a high level of learning. When you read thousands of books, you become a great reader. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I'd like to share a few quotes, um, some of my favorite quotes that my students wrote throughout the years. I want you to know that when they wrote these quotes, they were six years old. Six. You're going to be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Kindness is important because it is like peace. Rosalie. <laughs> Kindness is important because it shows a caring personality. Julia said that. <laughs> All these students are not here right now. <laughs> these are just some of my other ones. But Rosie's here, and so is Tommy. We're going to get to his. Mm -hmm. uh, kind people will ask if you are feeling left out. Kind people will stick up for other people. Catalea. Mm -hmm. Kindness is important because it will make people happy, and then people will spread it. Aww. Noah. Kindness is important because it will help people feel loved. Tommy. Oh, Tommy. <laughs> Kindness is important because it will make the world a better place. Lyra, six years old. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> From the mouths and hearts of our early childhood learners, they have been telling us what kind of world they want to live in. If we only choose to listen and act, Let's help them reach their dream of a kinder world. Be kind, act kind, and spread the kindness symbol. I'd like to introduce our readers for tonight. 
Uh, they I'm going to include the year they were in my TK classroom also, so you can see that it did span throughout the years. Uh, Rosalie will be our first reader. Mm -hmm. She's 2019-20 uh, class. Uh, Denver, I did not have the honor of being Denver's teacher, but Denver wanted to join our kindness project, and so he's here with his siblings. Uh, Shoal, our 2020 through 2022 class. Uh, Tommy, 2019-2020 class. August, 2018-2019 class. And Malachi, 2018-2019 class. Uh, August and Malachi were here five years ago reading the Kindness Proclamation oh. before the board at that time. I, um, I have to tell you, I'm so proud of these students, not for what they've done, but also for their patience in sitting in the audience <laughs> <laughs> for an hour and a half. Thank you. <laughs> And, and I'm also proud of our other students who just couldn't make it today for conflicting uh, uh, experiences they had. Thank you again for having us. And now I'm going to leave it to the kids. All right. I put paper right here too if you need it. There we go. You're allowed. I can't believe I'm nervous. You're going to do great, Rosalie. Tommy. <laughs> it's okay. You've done this before. I know. It's, I it's know. weird. Good. A resolution of the school board, of the school board, <laughs> of Bavard <laughs> <Bavard> County. <laughs> Recognizing the five-year anniversary of the kindness all-around symbol, whereas this kindness symbol was <laughs> in... Oops, you're doing great. You're doing so good. Initiative started in the TK1 transitional kindergarten classroom at Tropical Elementary in Merritt Island and... Wait, whereas the tropical class determined having a symbol for kindness would help make people more aware of kindness in their everyday lives and since then the kindness symbol has received many recognitions including a resolution from the Brevard School Board on February 26, 2019. On February 19, 2020, the Florida House of Representatives and the Florida Senate both signed resolutions recognizing the creation of and proclamation of the kindness symbol and. Whereas on March, f oh God, that's loud. Whereas on March fifth, twenty twenty, U.S. House Resolution eight eight seven was referred to the Committee on Education and Labor. On March sixth, twenty twenty, Representative Posey submitted remarks to the con Congressional Record recognizing the kindness symbol. And on June tw twenty ninth, twenty twenty one, U.S. House Resolution five oh nine, submitted by Representative Posey and co-sponsored rep by Representative Darren Soto, Representative Brian Mast, and Representative Maria Elvira Salvalar, Salivar, making it a bipartisan re resolution. It was also referred to 
the Committee on Education and Labor. Okay. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Brevard County, Florida, that the fifth anniversary of the kindness all around the symbol is hereby recognized with all parents, students, community members, residents, and visitors of Brevard County, Florida, encouraged to use and promote this <coughs> official symbol of kindness. Adopted in regular session of the School Board of Brevard County on this 19th day of March 2024. Okay, let, we're gonna go ahead, do I have a motion and then we'll open this up for discussion. Move to approve. Second. All right, any discussion? I, yeah, I, I am going to say this as fast as I possibly can, but uh, because this is going to be my last year where this is happening, I have to take a moment to say this to you, Ms. Wilcox. And I think I've said this previously in the past super fast, but I, I don't care. I'm going to get into it. You are the most incredible teacher, and you are the reason I am an educator today. And I've been able to share this story this past year. I've been, been going out and speaking at events, and I, I always feel the need to share my why, and I've never really had the opportunity to do it, and I just need to acknowledge that. My mom, when she was really ill, my parents made a last-minute decision to move to Florida, and so I made a last-minute decision to join them. And I wasn't happy, and I failed out of college. And they told me, come to Brevard County, get your AA, we'll send you back to New York, and so I did. And I took like 24 credits in one semester because I wanted to get out of here. And I took random classes that I could care less about. I wanted to be a business major and go work on Wall Street. But I took an elementary education course that forced me to come to you at Endeavor <laughs> Elementary. And I spent that day with you. And I have never met a person who had loved their passion, their profession, and their children so much. You forever changed my life. And you changed my trajectory from that day forward. And I need you to know that. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that. And my husband thanks you for that because I met him in that class too. Aww. <laughs> Aww. So thank you. And I just want to say, you guys are so brave to stand up here in front of all of us funny looking adults standing behind a, a wooden platform. You were amazing. Great job. Miss yes. Campbell. Well, it was, it is my honor to have been on the board, you know, twice for you guys to come around. And I'm, I'm so glad, Ms. Wilcox, that you brought some of the original TK1ers. Are you guys in fifth grade or sixth grade? Fourth. Fourth. No, the oldest ones. Fifth. You're in fifth. Okay. Wow. What, you know what, when this initiative, when those kids hit middle school, it's just going to change middle school, right? I, I just want to share and do a little advertising, a little promo for you. Um, you can go to togetherkind.com and get all the history and all the places. It should have listed all the places that have adopted this symbol, right, which is not just the school board in the state, but also the county commissioners did it. Some of the cities did it. Um, you can get a history of, of what this symbol has done, and it also will link you. If you want to get your very own shirt to the Etsy shop, um, <laughs> stand up so you can see my, my shirt. Um, but it's... You know what, you guys, this isn't just for kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Every single one of us in this room needs to remember the importance of kindness and how we treat one another. Because in this room, there's people who don't agree with each other. But we have a choice. We can say what we need to say with kindness, or we can say it unkindly. And which one do you think everybody else wants to hear? With kindness, <laughs> right, exactly. And you know what? I'm a big believer that regardless of what you have to say, you can always say it and do it kindly. So thank you for reminding us of that tonight. You guys are amazing. And I'll be very proud to vote in favor of this in just a few seconds. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Campbell. Mr. Susan? I just want to say thank you for you guys coming out. Thank you so much for what you guys are <coughs> persevering to do. I appreciate you and all your dedication as an educator. Thank you. Mr. Trent? Same, guys. Uh, Reading in public is not the easiest, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you guys, uh, it'll be, hey, you broke the ice. You finished it. So, you know, you faced that fear and, and, and overcame it. So it, from now on, it's going to be, nobody's going to be able to shut you up now. You're going to be able to read in front of anyone and as many people as possible. So that, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for putting this forward. 
Yes, thank you guys so much. I want to share, little Rosalie, I see you back there. Um, you came up and you were so kind to give us a sticker to remind us, which I have put on my laptop. I think some of my fellow board members have stuck theirs in different places. But you gave me a post-it note too and it says, you have the power to change the world simply by being an example of kindness. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep it up here at all times. So I'll never forget that that is why we should always, always, always display our behavior. So thank you guys so much. I am so happy to proudly vote yes for this um, the world needs more kindness and I appreciate you guys taking the initiative to spread it so all right any other further discussions no Paul roll call please Miss Jenkins aye Miss Campbell aye Miss Wright aye Mr. Trent aye Mr. Susan aye it passes 5-0 the kindness resolution stays thank you guys so much yep we're gonna can we take a picture with you guys is that okay down front Are, are you guys okay if we take a short recess? I need to go to the restroom. So yes. can we take a 10-minute recess yeah. and resume back at 7.22? Yeah. All right. Thank you.
All right, thank you. My microphone's off right for the short break. Mm. All right, we are now at the uh, administrative staff recommendations. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins. Aye. Ms. Campbell. Aye. Ms. Wright. Aye. Mr. Trent. Aye. Mr. Susan. Aye. All right, we don't have any of these individuals, I believe, that are present. Is that correct? No, ma'am. Okay, so we are now moving on to the public comments portion of the meeting. How many public comments do we have tonight? 18. All right, we have 18 um, speakers this evening. You will each receive three minutes. In an effort to remain unbiased to the speakers at the podium, I will ask the parliamentarian, who is our board attorney, to announce the speakers and manage the time clock. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind the public of the rules written out in board policy 0169.1. All comments should be directed at the board or individual board members. Staff members or other individuals shall not be addressed by name. Abusive, obscene, or irrelevant comments will not be permitted. Orderly conduct is expected from all public comment participants. And the presiding officer may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant's public comment opportunity. Mr. Gibbs, can you please call the first three speakers? Brooke Bothune, Albert Underwood, and Kathleen Ruega. According to the CDC, the second leading cause of death for children ages 5 to 14 is drowning. These unfortunate deaths, however, can be prevented through structured water safety programming. My company, Aquatics and Education, would like to spearhead such a program in Brevard County, starting with a $10,000 grant I've already secured to implement such needed programming. The key to prevention is education, given ongoing concern of drowning, especially among children and those in lower income areas. Emphasizing water safety on par with academic education can save a life. Without ensuring the safety of our students, the chance to impact academic success is compromised. In pursuit of my goal to lead drowning prevention efforts, I forge partnership with institutions like Palm Bay Fire Department and actively serve national, state, and local drowning prevention councils. Additionally, I bring professional expertise as a certified swim instructor and community coach. In addition to classroom water safety, Formal swim lessons are also needed as they decrease the risk of drowning by 88%. Unfortunately, Brevard County struggles with restricted pool access. Additionally, inclement weather and limited access to heated pools during colder months lead to numerous cancellations of swim lessons, which impacts our ability to effectively save lives through experiential learning. For these reasons, I urge the school board to protect the last remaining indoor pool, elementary school pool at Dr. W.J. Creel Elementary. I'm aware of all countermeasures given that to destroy this pool. However, I believe we can work together through a collective commitment from the district. We can bring this life-saving instruction to our community. Along with the $10,000 grant I've already secured, the 2024 legislation introduced a program allocating $500,000 for swim lessons to low-income families. It is necessary for us, as the leaders in Brevard County, to embrace this new legislation. This initiative could not only revive Creole Elementary's adaptive swim program, but also cater, cater to the entire campus where 100% of the students are eligible for free reduced lunch as reported from the child care food provide, or program. Once Creole students are served, I would love to extend this program to other Title I elementary schools, providing after school access and those in the need. This program ad adhere to the same guidelines as high school pools where this asset can be granted similar privileges. Creole pool could offer summer enrichment pro programs to the students as well as certification cords for older students. Myla Elementary previously supported similar initiatives, however, regrettably, that pool was closed down along with others. Again, Creole has the last remaining elementary school pool. Drowning has a ripple effect on the community. Parents, siblings, grandparents left with the unimaginable loss. The first responders cannot erase the memory of going to those scenes. Friends, families shaken from the tragedy, the teachers, can't comprehend the sudden loss of a promising life we have. I urge the board to prioritize water safety education. My name is Brooke Bothan. It would be an honor to join forces and work together as a collective commitment. Thank, Thank you, you, Brooke. Albert Underwood, followed by Kathleen Ruega and Gina Derringe. Uh, Madam Chair, distinguished board, my name is Albert Underwood. Satellite High School, class of 72. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the CEO of Aqua Blue Pools in Melbourne, Florida, started by my mom and dad in 1969. 
we are the builders of the Creole Elementary School back in the day when we put the pool in. I have served in a lot of capacities in the swimming pool industry. I currently serve as a local president of the Florida Swimming Pool Association's chapter here in, in uh, Bavard County. I want you to know that the FSPA has always been the spokesperson for the swimming pool industry. They are the leading voice. Uh, we have over 750 members and an economic impact last year of over $12 billion. The swimming pool industry is a valuable asset to the state of Florida. There's always been a concern about child safety. The FSPA has always, in its 60 years, had water safety and child drowning issues on the forefront. Very concerned about it. I want you to know that the industry supports this endeavor. We established a, uh, a foundation a number of years ago, the Florida Swimming Foundation, and it, is in the, uh, it has an ongoing fund source to help uh, financially support the, the effort. We also have a giant uh, body of expertise that's willing and able to help support any kind of endeavor to help save children's life. Because ultimately that's what we want. We want every child as a swimmer. And whatever we can do to help achieve that goal is what we want to do. The industry a number of years ago embraced doing pool alarms, safety fence, automatic door closures. None of that stuff does near as good as water safety education, adult supervision, and training. Uh, we can save lives that way. We had one device that was supposed to automatically close a sliding glass door uh, around a pool. As everyone knows in Florida, we have sliding glass doors everywhere. We actually were designing a guillotine is what that thing was. That wasn't going to save anyone's life. We currently put an alarm on a pool that's made overseas somewhere at an expense of $185 per alarm. That, that's not going to save a child's life. It's, it's all smoke and mirrors. What's going to save a child's life is education, training. And Brooke, is, when she joined our group a few years ago, it has been a whirlwind. We think we can bring this to reality. We asked the school board to consider supporting this endeavor. I think we can do it. We're willing and able to help them do it. We want to save children. We want every child to be a swimmer. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Kathleen Ruega, Gina Derringe, and Bernard Bryan. Hi, my name's Kathleen Ruesca. I'm actually here on behalf of Carrie McGovern. She's the Every Child a Swimmer Program Manager for the state of Florida. And I don't know if you're all familiar with the Every Child a Swimmer Law. It went into effect in 2022-23 school year. Each public school shall provide a parent who initially enrolls his or her child in the school information on the important role water safety education in courses in swimming, lessons play, and saving lives. The number one cause of death for kids from one to four, year old, four years old is drowning. The second cause of death for kids from four years to 15 is drowning. Um, this is a letter from Carrie, she, could be, she couldn't be here, from Casey, I'm sorry. To the esteemed members of the school board, my name is Casey McGovern. I am the mother of a drowning victim. My daughter passed away from a drowning in our backyard pool in 2009. Upon saying goodbye to her, I made a promise to commit my life to educating others on the risk factors associated to drowning. I have dedicated my life to the topic of water safety and drowning prevention. Holding the position of the Drowning Prevention Program Manager for the Department of Health of Broward County, as well as sitting on many statewide committees, I am now leading the efforts for Every Child a Swimmer Program, a program that passed legislation in our state mandating all schools to share water safety information and where to go for local swim lessons. The program also provides Learn to Swim scholarships for quality lessons up to three months for children from low-income families. I come before you today with a heartfelt plea to endorse, to endorse Brooke Bothan as the implementer of a water safety program at Dr. W.J. Cleel in Elementary. As we deliberate on the crucial issues of water safety, it, it is imperative that we entrust this responsibility 
to a dedicated and qualified individual who possesses both the passion and expertise necessary to make a meaningful impact on the lives of youth. Brooks' passion and expertise, I'm sorry, Brooks' unwavering commitment to the safety and well-being of children is evidence in her extensive experience and proven track record in the field of aquatic education. With a background in swimming instruction and lifeguarding, Brooke brings a wealth of knowledge and practical skills to the table, making her eminently qualified to lead a water safety program at our school. The proposed closure of the school only jeopardizes recreational opportunities, but also undermines our commitment to fostering a culture of water safety among the residents of Brevard County. In a region committed in a region surrounded by waterways, beaches, the ability to swim is not merely a leisure activity, but a crucial life skill that can prevent tragedies and save lives. However, I come bearing a beacon of hope in the form of Every Child a Swimmer program. This initiative not only provides- Thank you, Kathleen. Can you do me a favor? Is it possible for you to email the board the remainder of that speech so that yes. we have that? No problem. Sorry, the three minute time frame is okay, up though. No but yes, thank you. Gina Derringe, Bernard Bryan, Diana Haynes. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, board. Uh, I just want to share a delightful uh, Thursday we spent last week. The League of Women Voters attended the Science Fair at Central Middle School last Thursday, where we awarded our Indian River Lagoon uh, dolphin that Fran Bear, there, those of you who know Fran herself, put the sand in the dolphin. Um, it focuses on the health and survival of the Indian River Lagoon. Uh, I want to thank the staff at Central uh, Middle School, Heather, who I worked with at, at Vieira, uh, for getting the gym ready, providing lunch, but also for the staff at the district who worked so hard, all the teachers and principals that were behind the scenes, making sure that we knew where to go for the different exhibits and where, if we had any questions at all, to go to them. They worked so, so well. Uh, the young man that we awarded uh, the award to, I can't say his name, um, was from Holland, and his project was on the effects of nitrogen poop on the Indian River red uh, mangroves. And he was just adorable. He, he owned that project. He told us all about it. Uh, the added addition to that is that a friend of mine was at the last school board meeting when I mentioned the other... Uh, the other competition we looked at in the north, uh, who is a dean at Bayside. And she texted me that night and said, hey, you know, you need, you need judges for this? And I said, yeah. And she said, can you, can you hook me up with the judges? Because our National Honor Society students need to do something like this for volunteer hours, and our AP uh, physics class would like to do it. So they showed on the scene, 10 of them, kind of alleviated the pressure of the judges in certain areas, and they came in and they were outstanding. How they interacted with the kids and asked questions and looked at their log books, it was, it was just amazing. So uh, great job by the district, great job by the kids and the teachers. Um, I also want to acknowledge the passing of John Fields, who was a teacher at Sherwood Elementary for 27 years. We lost John March the 10th. He was just an outstanding guy, uh, loved the kids, loved the community. I worked with him as a member of the PTO at Sherwood uh, where my daughter attended and also as a substitute teacher and it was a pleasure to work with him and please keep his wife Janine in your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Bernard Bryan, Diana Haynes, Crystal Casey. Good evening. Uh, thank you, board. Uh, my name is Bernard Bryan, and I represent the South Brevard branch in WCP, as well as the concerned citizens of South Brevard. Uh, I spent over the last five years uh, trying to understand the Brevard public school system, and I'm still lost today as I was five years ago. But there's just a couple of things I want to share and bring to light. And I would like to thank this board for listening to us and being supportive of us and really trying to help our children. Uh, just a couple of things that I would like to share with you today. I spent a lot of time looking at data, trying to understand why this child is not doing well, 
and what can we do to help that child? Uh, as you're aware, I, I'm at five different school as SAC members. I mentor 16 kids so that I can do everything I can to help that child. But just a couple of things. I've looked at your PM2 data. I still see some opportunities there with reading and math. So as I heard from the dais today, there's a lot of opportunities, jobs that are in these communities. And if our children do not have the reading and math skills, they aren't going to fulfill those jobs. And just, I would like to bring to light, um, when I look at Brevard Public Schools, there are 35 C schools, based on your last FAST um, analysis, and then there are four D schools. So out of the population of around 87, so we have a lot of opportunity there. And I would like to challenge this board. Um, what can we do in your district to help every school within the next two years to become a B school? Um, so, so what can everybody on this diocese do so that that can happen? And I truly believe if we look at those data, look at that opportunity, um, there's, there's nothing this district cannot do. And to be honest with you, I've, I've visited with many principals. I see the hard working of your staff. I see the hard working of your teachers. But in order for them to get to that B level, um, it's going to take this board support. It's going to take this team support. Look at what those principal needs. Because they're going to get burned out. Um, you know, when you look at being in a D school and a, and a C school, and they look at the other competitive school, they're going to want to compete to that level. And so I'm just asking if you will consider, you know, provide the resources that the principal needs. Some schools may need more than others in order to get to that B level. So I just challenge you, at least over the next two years, in your district, uh, what can you do to make that school a B school? And last thing I want to say, please cadence that with the community. Uh, what are you doing to make your school a B school? Thank you, Thank you Bernard. <laughs> Diana Haynes, Crystal Casey, Gregory Ross. over and over this board. And I'd like to start from the beginning. I'd like to start about a, public, about a form that we all fill out to speak um, during these meetings, in which I had a parent fill out for me one day when I was late in traffic. And somehow from the table outside to the dais, the form disappeared. There was never any video shown to me, even though I asked repeatedly of her filling out the form and handing it in. And that's rather shoddy public records if you ask me. And then I came before this board multiple times regarding um, an incident that we're all aware of, the alleged sexual assault at Johnson Junior High School. It's almost two and a half years now, and there still have been no answers definitively. I have a police report where two par a parent um, and an in-law and a teacher have a conversation. They say this event occurred at Johnson Junior. I've got text messages from the party that had the direct conversation with the alleged teacher about the incident, uh, confirming that it's being worked upon and it's being looked at, but yet no one ever came forward with the names. I've got information that Mr. Diaz was involved and he gave um, exoneration to this individual, this, this employee of yours so that they wouldn't be fired because I guess they were getting close to uh, retirement and didn't want to divulge who the victim was. So if this is all true, I would like an explanation from this board and from this community as to how we can allow not only a victim student to still be out there, but if this is all true and not some hoax or some made up political scheme, how we can allow a perpetrator, a sexual assaulter, to roam free amongst our students because we have gotten no answers to this incident. I've asked questions about an incident that occurred at McNair back when we were discussing and dealing with kids who like to think they were um, alternative animals. 
And when I put in my public records requests asking if there were OSHA reports, incidents, reports of this feces that a student saw not once but twice in the hallways at McNair, I was told nothing existed. So are you calling me a liar? Because in my 66 years of being an educated adult, I don't usually, you know, go down those roads with such tall tales. What I want to know is if this student, who I have complete confidence in, in telling the truth, told the truth, why isn't there any documentation? Thank you, Ms. Thank Haynes. you. Crystal Casey, Gregory Ross, Rebecca McAllenan. Good evening, board. Dr. Rindell. I'm here to request respectfully that Brevard Public Schools adhere to Florida Statute 119 and adhere to Florida Statute 1002.22. There are a couple of people sitting up here on this board that I'm not going to specifically name right now that are involved in non-compliance with Florida statutes. Just waiting for the nonverbal so that we can catch that on the camera. So as everybody knows, there is an ongoing lawsuit with public records and we don't need to name the names because I think everybody here knows who we're talking about. I'm hoping that we'll get an update tonight on the status of that lawsuit because it deals directly with violations pursuant to Florida Sunshine or Statute 119. So I would like to implore this board to follow the law. I'm just an average citizen asking for Brevard Public Schools and their employees to follow Florida Statute 119 and follow Florida Statute 1002.22. From here into the near future, as long as you hold your position, you still have to follow the law. No one is above the law. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cowsey. Who's our next speaker? Gregory Ross, Rebecca McAllenan, and Julie Mantione. Good evening, board. Thank you for this opportunity for public comment. Sorry, Ms. Casey. I'll name names. <laughs> Mr. Trent, let's start with your lack of ethics. Can you tell us all what was in the handwritten note you passed to Ms. Wright at approximately 10, 10 a.m. at the March 12th school board meeting? Before you claim ignorance on the note, I filed a public records request for a copy of that note and copied you and Ms. Wright on it on that very day. So I know you're aware of the request. It has now been more than a week and I have not received a copy of that note as required by law. Can you clarify, clarify the, what the delay is in providing that note? Does it contain a sunshine law violation? Does it contain more of your name calling of the public and taxpayers? Perhaps Mr. Gibbs can um, give you some training that all written communications during a school board meeting between school board members are public records. Speaking of violations of law, Mr. Susan, what is your delay in producing the public records requested by Ms. Jenkins? The phone call records she has had to sue you to produce at a cost of $100,000 to the Brevard taxpayers. $100,000 that could have been avoided if you would just produce those records as required by law. You admitted in court documents that you used your personal cell phone to discuss board-related business with County Commissioner Tobia, the Sheriff's Office, the Florida Department of Education, and Randy Fine. Unsurprisingly, Randy Fine illegally spent 10K of PAC can, money to Mr. avoid Ross, the summons for a lawsuit. Mr. Ross, can you please refrain from using people's names? Thank you. Maybe he was looking under his desk for loose change to pay as a lawyer. <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure why you do not want to disclose those phone records, Mr. Susan. Perhaps you were discussing ways to remove Ms. Jenkins from her District 3 seat and for Mr. John Thomas to be relocated into District 3. Just a little good old boy political corruption, right? Can you Ms. please Campbell. refrain from using names, Mr. Ross? Yes. 
Thank Ms. you. Ms. Campbell, this is the type of corruption that we have been pointing out to you for more than a year. We had hoped you would show courage and speak out publicly on the corruption of your fellow board members. At the very least, please stop enabling their corruption and unethical behavior. For example, you don't need to present a motion to ban age-appropriate books. You can rest assured that Mr. Trent will pass a motion to ban every book that doesn't meet his small world view, a small world view held by the majority of this board, a view that is costing the Brevard taxpayers $1.2 million a year to implement your book banning policies. Or we could just use a free and low maintenance opt-out form as we did for decades. But you just have to win them their culture wars, don't you, Mr. Trent? Speaking of culture wars, Mr. Susan and Ms. Wright, I listened with interest at the March 12th school board meeting as you desperately tried to paint the public commenters at the school board meeting as being the victims of misinformation. The only misinformation is that you guys are somehow qualified to be school board members. That's the misinformation that's out there. Brevard Public Schools deserves better. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Who's our next speaker? Rebecca McAllenin, Julie Mantion, and Sarah Mursky. Hello. Uh, as was said earlier, thank you for the opportunity to share public comments tonight. Um, as usual, I want to talk about books. Um, I realize there are no decisions that are being made tonight, but as a reminder, I've attended almost all the book review committees meetings and or watched them, as well as these board meetings and um, work sessions. And all the decisions that are made about books from the dais, the common excuse for removal is always the statutes, the statutes. So my question to you is, how much flexibility do you have as a local board? Your policy states that families can opt out, yet you never offer that or personally support that. Tonight, I've actually brought some copies of the opt-out form for, any, for you guys when I'll show them to you because I have questions about them. It was really, really hard to watch the discussion about the Nowhere Girls. The statute was worn like some kind of cloak, religious, clo religious cloak, where other books were deemed age appropriate that also had sexual content. I think the most disturbing part for me was all the inclusion in your comments of me and my, and as if your, your parental needs are more valuable because you're sitting up there, and that's incorrect. As a, as a board member, your job is to follow the statute, not your personal needs, it's not a PTA. The rules and policies exist based on your votes and your responsibility to the statutes and how you interpret them. And those votes should be based on those policies and the best outcome for all the students. To that end, I would further suggest that this form be revisited because it is performative at best and useless at worst. It does not, it's an all or nothing. It doesn't allow a parent to decide by book, genre, subject matter. It doesn't have dates on it. it it's really just, um, just performative. So I don't understand it and maybe someone can explain that to me. Um, and last thing I would like to say about that is um, when you say I would never want my child to read this with such magnanimous um, emotion, that's really insulting to the people who are okay with their kids reading it. And that's your parental right as a parent to opt out. But it's not fair for you to just put your personal beliefs about what you feel is important and what they should be reading. A book like The Nowhere Girls is such an important book. Um, and the last thing, that's, and it's too late, the last thing, it might be, it might be too late. Um, at the last meeting, there were a hundred and some policies. Would it be possible to name what those policies are as you're spouting them off instead of a race to move, m move to approve and yell, I, when it's something that's really great that you want that's offensive to other people? When the discussion is going on and the numbers of the policies, we, it's, it's impossible, the transparency is impossible to follow a hundred policies in one meeting when it's only by numbers? Would it be possible to say the Tylenol Amendment or whatever and, and kind of tone down the, you know, the, the rushing and the, it's really, it's not, it's not. Um, Thank you. Julie Montione, Sarah Mursky, Amy Raub. Hi, good evening. Um, Thank you for public comments. Uh, much of what I have to say today is after having viewed the discussion on Nowhere Girls. And I want to address some of those. And, and I guess I want to start by acknowledging that we are indeed in a very tumultuous time of these culture wars. 
and I am sympathetic in how you want, you see your role as balancing, or hopefully balancing your personal values with the mission of Brevard Public Schools. I actually spent a little time on the internet today trying to find the mission that I couldn't, so I'm very happy to see it right there. Um, to serve every student with excellence as the standard. As I've mentioned in these meetings before, libraries have kind of been the way of education for thousands of years, and I would like to think we all want an excellent library. And I, and I guess I just want to emphasize the point that an excellent library has a diversity of viewpoints. Your, I, I agree with my friends, a library is not to say this is the one book that's gonna say what we feel about these issues. A library is about providing as many voices as possible so that we can have our students be educated. I also realized, uh, I wanna thank you Matt Susan, when you brought up space. Um, I am a very proud Brevard County residents with NASA, and I'm also a person who deeply loves mythology and classicism, and when I think about Apollo and Artemis, I think you guys, many of us, really kind of, I, I, are too protective of children and don't realize, like, the stories, Apollo tried to rape Daphne, Artemis killed someone who saw her naked. These are stories that little children have, and I'm not saying we should, but this idea that children have never had stories with adult content, the very names of the rockets that we proudly, with tax dollars, send into space are named after these stories. I just wanna end too by, by thinking of legacy, and I'm sympathetic of what y'all's legacy is gonna be. I mean. There will one day be a museum that will talk about book banning in 2024. And I just, I don't, I want you guys to think the next time you vote to remove a voice, to remove a book from a library, how you're gonna be represented in that museum. Because I know there's people during segregation that don't feel good about how they're in museums. Thank you, Jolie. Go next Sarah Mursky, <laughs> Amy Raub, Aiden McFadden. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board. My name is Sarah Mursky. I'm a wife, mother of two children in BPS, UCF BSW Student of the Year nominee, Taxpayer voter, I live in District 2 for school board, and I have a holistic interest in this school district being successful. Tonight, I would like to address the board about the discipline committee meeting in light of National Social Workers Day and the policy making skills and the peer reviewed research and evidence based practice that I and other social workers bring to the table. I was disappointed when the committee chose not to use the information for better behavioral health outcomes. In celebrating National Read Aloud Day, here are things that parents asked me to read aloud to the school board tonight. The definition of the phrase to get the boot in Collins Dictionary means to lose your job. This idiom could also mean someone is dismissed or fired. To get the boot could also mean to be voted out, evicted, or made to leave. I propose the latter definition is appropriate for Matt Susan. Opi parents' opinion of, is that Matt Susan should be voted out by Brevard citizens in District 4. You may be wondering why uh, Matt Susan should not be reelected. As parents, we have more questions than answers. Does District 4 deserve a school board member that attempts to resolve school issues by actually communicating with parents by email? Does District 4 deserve to receive accurate public records requests even if those PRRs include an official school board member's email address? Does District 4 deserve to be informed by other school board members or by their school board member when lockdowns occur and, occur and families are concerned about this, their children's safety? 
Does District 4 deserve to receive factual information about school board members' business affiliations if those affiliations may pose a significant conflict of interest? The answer to all these questions is a resounding yes. District 4 deserves better, and so does Brevard County. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Amy Raub, Aiden McFadden, and Debbie Parker. Hello. So, um, let me see. First of all, Katie, your little speech there about kindness. Whew. Um, it's not kind to speak in a little voice. That doesn't make you kind, okay? But I can do that for you. It's not kind to waste the book review committee's time. It's not kind to push your superstitions and religions onto our students. That's not kind. It's not kind to sex shame or to make kids, especially girls, feel dirty about their own bodies. And it's really not kind to empower sexual predators, which is what you guys are doing. When you ban books like that. <sighs> um, okay, so I wanted to talk about when you banned, at the end of February, you, you banned, um, I missed this meeting, you banned the Nowhere Girls. And, um, that was a glimpse into some really poor parenting styles of Matt, Jean, Megan, Katie, when you banned that book. I saw how you guys parent and the way you think, and we, not good, okay? Um, Jean, when you said, I don't want to plant those ideas in your 17-year-old boy's head, what I hear is uh, you have no dialogue with him, and I'm glad. <laughs> You'd be a terrible person to come to for advice, especially about sex. He sounds wise, and I'm glad he's wiser than you. 17 years old, do you think that you'd be planting any of those ideas? Like, uh, you're so out of touch. <sighs> um, the committee, the committee that you guys totally made up on your own, you removed all of the experts, all of the teachers, the media specialists. Um, you had a hand-picked hand -picked committee there for yourself. And uh, you, you stripped them of their power, just, you lied about it, but it was to take away public comment. You had your beautiful little committee, and you still didn't listen to them. You have zero respect for parents. You have zero respect for any of the citizens. They do not agree with you. They do not want the books banned. Stop your little crusade. We're not on, stop banning books. That's not what the public wants. Jean, you have any animal noises you wanted to make? You got eight seconds, buddy. No? All right, thank you. Well, who's the next speaker? Aiden McFadden, Debbie Parker, and Paul Raub. Hi, I'm Aiden. Sorry, I didn't want to lean over the whole time. Um, I'm Aiden McFadden, and I went to Brevard Public Schools uh, my whole public school life, which was my whole school life. Um, and I would just like to say how when someone well, when you guys ban a book, um, go against a decision of a committee, uh, do something stupid that makes me question something, uh, just question what you guys <laughs> are thinking up there. Um, it, it just makes me feel really disrespected that we have these kind of people representing our students and making these decisions for our students in this county. And when you, like when you say things like how my mom said, like planting ideas in a 17 year old's head, a 17 year old is one year away from 
18 years old, which is an adult. So I, I just don't, it, it's disrespectful. You know, it's a human that when you're 17, you're a person. You have your own thoughts. You, you've taken in a lot of stuff your whole life. I mean, 17, you're not old, but you know, you're not five years old. Um, I just really want to get across that it just really feels disrespectful to, like, it, it just feels wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Who's our next Debbie speaker? Parker, Paul Raub, Liz Mkhitaryan. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity to speak and I speak for myself. Every student, school staff person and family in Brevard County of every color, every sector of the economy, every religion and ethnicity, every gender identity, every ability and disability, every mentally healthy and unhealthy person, and any and every other difference you can describe is affected by the decisions and actions of others. The actions of Brevard schools and this school board will truly make a difference for years and years to come for everyone. A couple of weeks ago, March 11th, there was a settlement reached and it provides critical protections and clarifications to previously vague laws and rules that developed following the Don't Say Gay law. Now, free expression has been restored. Students and teachers can again speak and write freely about sexual orientation and gender identity in classroom participation and assignments. Also, targeting LGBTQ plus individuals or topics under the guise of this law is explicitly forbidden. Now this is big. As long as the books aren't being used for classroom instruction, the law does not apply to library books. Other topics should be available for reading in school libraries too. Um, a few local facts. Did you know that on Christmas Day 1951, the Moors who were leaders in the civil rights movement, and he was the founder of the first NA NWACP branch in Brevard County, they were asleep in their bed in their home and were bombed. Both died, one on the way to the hospital and one in the nearest black hospital in Sanford. At that time, the hospital at Titusville would not accept or treat black people. Also, did you know that in January, just a couple months ago, the Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore Voting Rights Act was introduced. It aims to protect voters from the discriminatory voting practices and policies that have been put into place in the past couple of years in Florida. Students must have books available to them in their school libraries that will teach them about their history, all of it. And they can learn from the past, the actual past. And students need to be able to read about reality, not your reality, but theirs. Life in the US has changed and will continue to move on. It's time to embrace our actual future. Every one of us are experiencing changes that are for real. It's time to make a conscious decision and no longer resist and learn to accept. Most importantly, all students, all parents and families must be Thank respected you. and treated with kindness. Paul Raub, Liz Mkhitaryan, Kelly Kerbin. So uh, I was going to say thank you for allowing us to speak, but uh, hmm. heard so much. Uh, well, we were out of town, but uh, watched the video later last week's about statutes. We're bound by statutes. We can only it's not a, it's not us. It's the statutes. We love the you know books are good, but statutes. And uh, I believe it's statutory that this public comment period has to exist. And I wonder if that ceased to be true, how quickly it would go away. Um, so thanks, statutes. <coughs> and I say that not completely randomly because that's part of the um, fascinating arc of the, uh, 
what are we called now? The uh, book recommend, I don't know, what are the book review committee, whatever we're called these days, um, where, um, you know, this sort of zone of demoralization that I've been caught up in as part of that. Um, like, if you wanted people to lose interest in being part of this process and quit, I'm not sure how much you would do differently than what's happened, maybe some of it quicker. Um, you might, you know, pull the bait and switch of, there's gonna be experts on the committee and they're gonna be listened to and they're gonna have a vote and then, oops, well, we didn't like those results. Let's remove the experts. Wait, oh, wait, let's remove their vote, but now let's just remove them entirely. Oh, let's replace some of the members, but let's take five months to do it while y'all sit around and uh, then, oh, I know. Let's bring in the person who challenged most of the books that we're, um, that we're reviewing, that'll be hilarious. Um, and then if they get criticized, let's take another couple months off and, oh, remove public comment. I'm sorry, restructure the committee so that it is merely recommend, making recommendations and therefore, oh, no longer required by statute to receive public comment. It, it would still be an option. It could still be allowed, but it's not required, so oh, there it went. Interesting. Um, and then, uh, the last full meeting that we had, this committee agreed unanimously to recommend that the Nowhere Girls be kept. And this is not a committee, historically, that is unanimous on anything, really. There's some huge disagreements in there that we've been very vocal about, and unanimously. But this book that is about, uh, you know, authority trying to sweep things under the rug and um, keep everything sweet and uh, keep the uncomfortable things out of the public eye, that got voted down four to one over the, again, I think unprecedented, unanimous recommendation of the committee. So, I'm gonna keep going. I've been to every meeting so far. I'll continue to come to every meeting, but it's getting harder. Thank you. Liz Mkhitaryan, Kelly Kerbin, and Ava Wolfenkohler. Good evening. Liz Mkhitaryan, Titusville. I'm the founder of the national organization Stop Moms for Liberty. I am here to make a suggestion to you board members. I was very pleased to see you approve a proclamation on kindness. Kudos. Weren't those children great and so well behaved? Oh my goodness. Just a little tip, you can move an agenda item when you see children sitting out here. You could have made a motion. Do better. So how about if you start modeling kindness as a body? Board behavior has declined dramatically over the last couple of years. And I mind you that I've been involved in Brevard schools longer than mm, all of you. Of course, I have seen some attacking type comments at this podium. But you know what? People are angry. You're being paid with taxpayer dollars to sit there and pay attention. It's what you need to do. So let's talk about that behavior. Some examples, stating that you are only here to serve uh, conservatives, unkind, refusing to look at community members like Mr. Trent is doing right now when community members come to this microphone, unkind, leaving the dais when your community members are speaking, unkind, making facial expressions that are dismissive, even to BPS students? Unkind, folks. Grabbing and eating snacks and having your whatever beverages and whatever cups you choose to use in front of a group that sits here just as long with no chance for them having snacks. I used to tell my kids, if you don't have enough for everyone, don't eat in front of other people. So making rude comments, let's talk about that. Oh boy, here we go. Get ready, Megan. Or meowing at your constituents. All unkind. I would never have allowed my five-year-olds at BPS to talk under their breath negatively about others the way that a couple of you have done. 
If five-year-olds can act that respectfully, so can you. So for all of our sakes, please turn off those hot mics because you're really embarrassing yourselves and this community. The chair needs to start controlling the meetings, please. Displayed behavior by these board members is not acceptable and the community is watching. So hot mics off, start looking at the people that are speaking. Mr. Trent, I'm here. So in my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Mkhitaryan. All right, next speaker. Kelly Kirvin, followed by Ava Wolfenkoller. When speaking with a crisis PR consultant, you all use words like a joke, chaotic, and self-serving to describe how you thought the public felt about the Brevard School Board. After the last meeting, I think those words are too kind. I witnessed Matt utter the words, quote, get ready, Megan, under his breath when a friend of mine came to speak, and then Jean Trent responded by catcalling her. Just so we are clear, what Jean Trent did is called sexual harassment. Last year, Gene Trent made a bold statement when discussing the funding for Loving Guidance. He said, quote, we didn't have safe spaces growing up and we turned out fine, unquote. But did you? Good men. Men with emotional maturity and empathy don't sexually harass women. They aren't intimidated by strong women. They don't belittle female students and they certainly don't get barred from teaching in their own school district for lying about being arrested because they got into a drunken bar fight. Of course not to be outdone, Matt Susan replied under his breath with, quote, actually it hasn't when a public speaker said that religion has been handled well in our school system. Would you care to expand on that, Matt, or explain why you were pandering to an extremist minority that would like to bring America back to the days of the Mayflower, whose co-founder of the local chapter openly admitted that she doesn't believe teenage girls should bother attending high school because their only future is becoming a traditional housewife. I can only speak for me and my daughters, but I'm raising them in a house where they understand they have a voice and a choice in their future. Pandering to religious extremists who are actively working to indoctrinate our students into harmful ideologies and false Christian teachings are dangerous. Next, I am calling for the end of the Book Reconsideration Committee. The public is tired of being lied to about the good governance Megan claims this board is doing. It's time for this board to own up to your own bias, read the books yourselves, discuss them, and cast your vote. This recommendation will save BPS time, resources, and money. We have wasted millions of dollars in the pursuit of book banning that frankly could be used in a multitude of other places like teacher and staff pay, trainings, and intervention tools to close achievement gaps. And I know both Megan and Katie will hit back with statements like, and I quote, the statute says the school board can blah, 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 and I'm not arguing that you can't control the policy. I'm saying that you are neither qualified nor intelligent enough to do it. The policy has been rewritten time and time again, and it continues to get worse with each rewrite, so just end it. And Megan, I've got to ask, is your committee member still even talking to you about the hateful things you said about the Nowhere Girls? She bravely shared her story about her experience with sexual harassment and grooming at the hands of a teacher as a BPS student. You respond by calling the book trash and stating you wouldn't give it to anybody to read. Using hateful and unprofessional rhetoric to me is one thing, but that was your friend. Did you even think about that before you openly disrespected her voice and her choice? And then you went on to claim that you were going to find a replacement book? Once again, please stop. You can't even effectively run a meeting. The last thing you need to be in charge of is picking my children's library books. Thank you, Ms. Carmen. Ava Wolfenkohler. Hi, um, I'm Ava. I just wanted to come up here and say that well, I started a new book last night, but um, I wanted to say that if I read you parts of it, you would ban it. Um, and maybe it's not something you would be interested in, but shouldn't you be proud of me for reading? Isn't that the important part, my education? And I'm so grateful that I'm lucky enough to have access to this kind of literature, unlike so many of your students. So it would be kind of you to keep them in mind. Thanks. All right, thank you. Board, you good to keep going? I'm good. Everyone's okay? No one needs a restroom break? All right. Um, we are not the consent agenda. Dr. Rendell. Thank you, Madam Chair. There are 26 agenda items under this category. Thank you, Dr. Rendell. Does any board member wish to pull any of the items? 
I wish to pull F22 for discussion. Any others? All right. Can do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Just mine that I'm pulled. I'm, I'm not discussing this one now. I'm, we're voting on these, then going back to that one. Okay. Roll, uh, Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins. Aye. Ms. Campbell. Aye. Ms. Wright. Aye. Mr. Trent. Aye. Mr. Susan. Aye. All right. Um, the item that I pulled for discussion, uh, F22, has to do with supplements to the separate day school. And board, I, I pull in this one just to ask a quick question because there's a dollar amount tied to this, and I don't know that that was what we agreed upon. And so I would just like the board to weigh in on this discussion and decision. Motion and a second. Sorry. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> okay. All right. Discussion. There it is. I apologize. Um, so the if you pull this item up and you look at it, it's based on a, a supplement to Gardendale, which, separate day school, which is our, our most difficult school by all means. Um, and I don't, I want to hear from the board on what their consensus is in regards to the dollar amount for the supplement. I know this is what we had done last year, but I thought that the board had a discussion about increasing it and I could be totally off here. So I just want to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, from my memory, this is the dollar amount that was agreed upon because I I had said, I wish this would be higher. I don't think it's high enough, but this is what the majority of the board supported in that meeting. Okay. I, I do remember this being the dollar amount. I think the, the priority that we said to staff was we need to go ahead and get it handled before the transfer window right. opens, which right. is about to happen. Um, so this is perfect timing um, so that the people who are there um, would know they're gonna continue to have that stipend or supplement rather and then the people who are interested in transferring in will know what they're coming into so um i i to me this is exactly we, we you know we want to make sure we continue on with what we're having and and making sure that it's done in a way so that i think the way it was written out in this agenda item so that it's uh prorated so if they even if they teach a right. part of the year mm -hmm. that everybody's going to get a, a part based on how long they they serve at that school okay thank you Ms. Campbell, um, I, Mr. Susan, do you have anything to weigh in on this for Mr. Trent? No, I'll wait for okay. you to lay out what it is. All right. You were I know this one's, I, I, here, this could be a starting point. I know we're trying to get this and get this in place before we open the window up. Um, I just, again, I feel like this supplement needs to be increased based on the work that they are doing at this school. And anybody that goes to that school cannot argue with that, I don't think. Um, so if this is the will of the board to start here, uh, that's fine. But I think when it comes time that we have the discussion again about maybe additional supplements, we need to look at increasing this one. Go, go ahead, Mr. Trent, you, oh, sorry. Uh, I can't argue with the point that the amount of work that they're doing at Gardendale. Um, I, I know that was the numbers we talked about. I remember Ms. Jenkins saying I wish it was more. My thought at the time was if, if we're gonna give Gardendale teachers more, we need to talk maybe about ALC teachers um, and try to get them into the picture. But I do remember the five here and, that, that, and that's, okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. All right, um, so then we'll go ahead and vote on it. Can I, I just wanna follow up with that too. Um, thank you for sparking my memory about Mr. Trent. Um, because then the, the conversation went down to, you know, we have got VE classrooms, VEB uh, classrooms, right. pre-K ESE classrooms, and I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I mean, you know me, I advocated for it, but that's a way bigger conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so the reason that this was kept at the five was like Ms. Campbell said, get it through so that these people know that they're gonna get it again. Anyone going there gets it again. Um, but if we're gonna talk about increasing supplements for all of our ESE um, classrooms, that's a way larger conversation and, t and ticket number that we need to talk about. Okay. Fair enough. Do you have anything else? Or you turn yours yeah, off? Okay. Got it. All right. Paul, roll call, please. Uh, can I just oh, say sorry. something real quick? I <laughs> yeah. think in general, um, we ran into a situation across the board where we are now in a position. I, I think we have three board members that were pretty solid on this being the number, right? Um, agree with, and everybody up here, I don't think it's just one or two agrees mm -hmm. that we need to have these higher. Yeah. There's no doubt about yeah, that. Absolutely. I think the issue that we have is, is, um, you know, identifying where in the budget we get it and stuff like that, but prioritizing because we're in a situation where we're competing even CTE, you know what I mean? Even all of it, it's, it's just, we're in a bad spot when it comes to, and we even just got all the millage money, right? So um, I feel like I agree with you 100% that it needs to be more. I think also Dr. Rendell has looked at 
um, possibly doing some innovative things at Gardendale so that there may not be the, the need like it is right now. So there's probably during budget time we can make those decisions, but I agree with you guys. Thank you. All right, fair enough. Any other discussion in, in regards to this? No? All right, Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins? Aye. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Wright? Aye. Mr. Trent? Aye. Mr. Susan? Aye. All right, Dr. Rendell, will you please let us know about the items under the action portion of the agenda this evening? Thank you, Madam Chair. The first item is H42, procurement solicitations. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? No. Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins? Aye. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Wright? Aye. Mr. Trent? Aye. Mr. Susan? Aye. Dr. Rendell. The last item is H43, Orion Charter School recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Um, can we clarify, move to approve the denial, denial. of this application? I'm gonna yeah, the recommendation is to deny the application for Orion Charter School to open next year. Okay, okay. second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Paul, roll call, please. Ms. Jenkins? Aye. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Wright? Aye. Mr. Trent? Aye. Mr. Susan? Aye. All right, we will move on to the information agenda, which includes one item for the board to review may be brought back uh, for action at a subsequent meeting. No action will be taken on this item today. Does any board member wish to discuss this item? I do. We, we mentioned it last week when we were going through all of the um, line items of the code <coughs> of conduct, but I wanted to thank again, uh, Ms. Dampier, Mr. Reed, all of the staff, um, all the community members who came out um, and stakeholders, other stakeholders, our representatives, BFT representatives, ten, ten. We ha we just had really good group, and I, Miss Dampier, that was her leadership to do it this way this year, and so this this revised code of conduct really is a good reflection of a diverse group of people who came together to have those conversations and really they got in everything they could cram in of the uh, of the decisions that were fit within the state uh, definitions and board policy so um, and even you know challenged us to change some policies so thank you for getting that done in such a timely fashion and I think once we have gone through this process then from this point on every year it should get easier and easier right that's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. So thank you guys. All right. Any other further discussion on this topic? No. All right. We are now at oh, Ms. Jenkins, are you no, you're not no, touched. No, okay, no, sorry, I, I saw you no, grab. No, okay. Um, we're now at the board member reports. Does any board member have any further things to report or discuss? I know. Mr. Susan, you do? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so in the three schools that I went to, we're seeing a lot of um, uh, Roy Allen uh, in regards to permission slips, right? Um, so at Roy Allen, they have a Bob book. It's about this tall, and it says bring a big old binder. And inside of it, it has all of the permission slips that they've requested. Part of the permission slips that they've requested are um, they've got, uh, like if they want to have a field day, they have to send home permission slips, stuff that's been going on for 20, 30 years. And one of the issues we have is, is that we have some schools that are very affluent, that have a career, a base of volunteers that chase after the kids on days like that. They call them and say, hey, want to let you know Johnny didn't turn in his permission slip and stuff like that. And then you have another, you have, but in the Title I schools, it's very difficult because they don't have the support to chase down some of that stuff. I'm going to, just as an FYI, I'm going to work with Paul to see if there's an opportunity to allow certain ones of those to be allowed by the principal or the superintendent to allow that hey, if you're gonna have a field day or you're gonna do something that's during the school hours that has, that is based on, um, you know what I mean, part of the school that it's been doing forever, that having kids sit in a room because their parents weren't able to fill out the form, I just, it's difficult. So I'm gonna look at that permission slip framework and see if there's some of those that we're able to allow kid, you know, classroom teachers who are having, um, you know what I mean, uh, something inside their classroom have to have permission forms for it, right? And there is a reason for that, and I do know what that is. Um, but I don't think the intent of what they were trying to do is applying to that. So I'm, I'm just going to look at it, just an FYI, and then I might bring it back. So if you guys want to, when you guys are inside your schools, kind of mention to them, say, hey, how's the permission form thing going? What's going on there? And then um, maybe bring that back when we come back in two weeks. That's all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Susan, any other further discussion or reports? No. Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>